I am ready to rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yeah. Ah. Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. Mr. Kotek Which schools are you guys from? Himalaya. Salbona, Molo, good morning, and assalamu alaikum, everyone, to all our learners, our parents, our educators, and um, for all those who's joining our special maths workshop. You're probably wondering what's been happening this morning. Um, our sincere apologies for the late start this morning. Uh, we had some technical gremlins that we had to fix up, but I'm glad we are online and we are live. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning for this special session that aims to assist our grade 12 learners with the exam preparations. My name is Shanazi Ibrahim. I am a volunteer for OCAF SA, and I'll be your host for today. Um, and I would like to extend a very, very warm welcome to one and all. Um, I'm coming to you live from Cape Town. Um, it's a bit of a cold, gray day today. So I'm hoping that everyone has um, the necessary like snacks and warm drinks and some water as well to keep you going. Um, and uh, to kick us off, we've got a little bit of housekeeping. Once again, if you're just joining us for the special mathematics program, we do apologize for the late start. We had a few gremlins that we needed to sort out, but we are good to go. So this program is hosted um, by OCAF SA in association with the Department of Basic Education, iSkills, and the K-Way Institute. So these sessions are hosted on OCAF Essays YouTube and Facebook platforms. And before we get started, I would like to encourage you all to like this video, to subscribe to our YouTube platform, so you will be notified of any upcoming sessions that we will be having. Also, please do drop some comments in, um, comments in for us today. Tell us where you're from, what city you're living in, what school do you go to? Even as far as telling us, you know, what did you have for breakfast this morning to keep you going? Um, and also, because we need to feed the social media beast, please tag us in, our, in your social media. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter as well. If you are using Twitter, I don't really use Twitter. So if you are, please tag us on um, Twitter as well. Um, and then also TikTok videos. If you want, us to, if you want to send us a few videos um, on um, TikTok, please use the hashtag, um, hashtag OCOF SA Maths. It's hashtag OCOF SA Maths. Um, so I will also be dropping all those details onto screen um, in a little while. But in the meantime, um, I want to introduce you to someone very special that's joining us all the way from Johannesburg. He is Mr. Siddiq Isaacs. He's the CEO of OCOF SA. I'm going to ask Uncle Siddiq to come online and to join us and to um, Really, just tell us a little bit about OCOF SA and what you guys do at your organization. Uncle Siddiq, assalamu alaikum and good morning. Thank you for joining us. Alaikum salam and uh, thanks for that introduction there, Shanaz. And I greet everyone this morning with a universal greeting of peace. Good morning to everybody. And um, yes, it is, it is a beautiful day here in Johannesburg. It is cold, but I can tell you this much. 
if you're feeling cold right now, you're going to be warmed up by the gentleman that comes next. He is going to energize this program in such a way that you're not going to feel cold. You're going to be energized and you're going to be in a great learning mood today. So a really, really warm welcome to all our participants this morning on the Grade 12 Maths program. It's great to have uh, people uh, so interested and so keen to be part of learning. It really is, is something special that people want to learn and want to uh, improve themselves from a mathematics point of view. And so a, a special thanks to Al Ghazadi, Muhammad Riza Ibrahim for hosting us today and uh, for all the areas around the country for, for participating. The support from the uh, Department of Basic Education, Mr. Lennon Mudao, who couldn't be with us this morning, but our special thanks to him. And then I suppose a man that needs no introduction uh, from Kway and Mr. Kota, who will be leading these discussions today. And um, for all those participating, our, our students, our educators, wow, if you were on our program last week, you cannot help but to feel energized with a gentleman like Mr. Kota around who really keeps things going. And then Shanaz Ibrahim, thank you for managing all the logistics and for ensuring that this day is going to be a great day to be with uh, the mathematics program. Why mathematics? Mathematics provides an effective way of building mental discipline, and that is quite key and quite important and encourages logical reasoning and mental rigor. And uh, in addition, mathematical knowledge plays a crucial role in understanding the contents of other school subjects as well. It's not just about maths, it's about all your other subjects. It's about science, social studies, even music and art. More importantly, maths plays an extremely vital role in society and uh, in every career that we have, even down to being a chef or a pilot. And I'm sure there's many budding pilots amongst you. There's many chefs amongst you. There's leaders amongst you. Who knows, even a president amongst you. And you will need mathematics. There's no question about that. And we've got the right person to deal with the mathematics program today. And he's going to take you through a series of things in terms of preparing you in terms of grade 12. And um, really, we believe it's going to be highly beneficial. And we believe that there are many students who need this kind of additional assistance. OCAF is therefore committed to supporting current and future educational programs. And we are involved in many downstream projects in the community. One of them, only one of them, is, is the mathematics program. We're involved in many other projects in terms of assisting where training is concerned, where education is concerned, uh, where uh, special uh, uh, other uh, involvement with things like cataract operations, etc. So OCAF is involved in a lot of downstream projects, but today our focus is on education, our focus is on mathematics. Just uh, also some info, which we'll give you a little bit more info by tomorrow at the end of the day. Um, we've got a competition running for grades 10, 11, and 12, and all those who have registered will be getting an email uh, in due course to participate in this competition, which will have quite a number of, of very, very interesting prizes, including cash. And this competition kicks off in January 24 after you've written your exams and after you've all done exceptionally well in mathematics. So from OCAF side, we are committed to supporting the community where education is concerned, and it is totally aligned with our vision and our future thinking. The last thing from me today is to wish you well. Enjoy the program. Enjoy Mr. Kota, who I thoroughly enjoyed last week. And, um, and I'm sure that you're looking forward to learning as much as what you can today from him and all around you in terms of this important subject of mathematics. All the best and enjoy the rest of the day. And thanks, Shanaz. Back to you.
Shukran so much, Uncle Sadiq. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope your words of wisdom and those little pearls that you've dropped this morning will kind of just inspire our learners to make the most of this workshop and to actually just take the journey in mathematics and academia forward. So thank you so much very much for joining us today. Um, first and foremost, we just wanted to also acknowledge um, one of our very, very best supporters of this program, which is the Department of Basic Education. They've been a strategic partner in this project and have been quite instrumental in mobilizing the schools in Johannesburg, um, in the Joburg metro region rather. Unfortunately, as um, Mr. Isaac said, Mr. Leonard Modau couldn't join us this morning due to um, unforeseen circumstances, but he conveys his best wishes for the workshop and to the learners, especially you guys who are busy preparing for your grade 12 examinations. We've worked closely with the department and they've been very helpful in pulling and helping us pull the schools together for this workshop. Um, and he normally attends our, our workshop quite regularly. So we're going to miss him this morning um, as he provides some support on the back end as well. But for now, I actually want to call on a very special gentleman. He's been hosting the in-person participants in the hall at the Al-Ghazali College in um, Johannesburg. So I'm going to call on Mr. Mohammed Riza Ibrahim to join us. Um, Mr. Kota, I'm not too sure if he's with you um, at the studio at the moment. So um, if we just give him a couple of minutes to just set up um, and everything. Um, I'm not too sure, uh, sure if you guys are where you guys are joining us all from, but we will be looking at some of the comments coming through on YouTube and Facebook in a in a few minutes. I see Mr. Um, Ibrahim has joined us as well. Um, so Mr. Ibrahim, assalamu alaikum and welcome to the well, studio. How are you this morning, sir? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Very well. Wonderful, so, wonderful. When I see all the, the, the children here, then I'm in fact extraordinarily well. Brilliant, sir. Tell us a little bit about Al Ghazali College and how you guys got involved with this program. Uh, actually, this this program is driven by the Alcaf Initiative, um, and then we come on board with Alcaf for the programs they have to offer. And our school also we host a lot of other programs like, um, you know, things like uh, the Palestinian Project and all other events that deal with like, uh, you know, the nation building and in fact the propagation of education, strengthening. Uh, our learners' motivation, even curriculum integration, and things like that, yeah. So tell us in terms of, like, why is it so important for Al Ghazali to get involved with this sort of virtual maths workshop? Why was it important for your school to get involved? Yeah. Okay, about 20 years ago, Al Ghazali hosted the AMS conference that was in the hall here and invited schools throughout the country to come in. And uh, Al Ghazali, we strive here to serve as a springboard for other schools to come on board. And we do not move, in fact, on our own. We don't do, any initiative is not for ourselves. In fact, whatever initiative we have, we pass it on to all other schools because we consider all children as our children, whether you're at Al Ghazali or not at Al Ghazali. So the important thing for us at Al Ghazali is that we serve as a springboard so that we can disseminate information, disseminate motivation. Also, we have strong uh, educational um, aspect which we really wish to partner with other schools. And we believe that partnership is the most important thing and that we are living here to share things and not to dissolve things within ourselves. Wonderful. My last question for you this morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim, is as an educator, obviously the, these workshops are, you know, uh, focused very much on the learner and getting the learner prepared for the examinations. Tell us from an educator perspective, you know, what are some of the steps that you guys are taking as teachers to kind of prepare yourselves as well to support these learners on the journey towards uh, that the final exam this year? Okay, so what we do is uh, we have grade 10, 11, and 12. We have extra classes in school. We have a lot of intervention programs. And where learners have a lot of difficulties, we make sure that those weak areas of underperforming learners are catered for. The grade 12, every Saturday we have programs. We alternate between all subjects. And uh, if the educator needs to see parents in private capacity, we also facilitate that. 
And even in the old days, for example, the first week we also have lessons for them. And then Friday lessons, sometimes we have, in fact, just recently we had lessons on a Sunday from 8 to 10, because uh, the English educator in Madrid felt that he had to cover new poems uh, which were introduced by the department, and he find that because the kids were not familiar with these type of poems, he had to, in fact, uh, come on board and uh, motivate them, and he had to do some research himself. So when we find a lot of gaps in our education, if we fill these gaps and our educators are always on board. And apart from that, we also have a partnership with the parents. For example, we have um, a consultation program. We call the parent team and we have a short say from 10 past three to half past five, where each parent comes in and for a 10 minute or 15 minute slot, and they uh, face the panel of matric teachers and then we discuss the areas which we feel that the child is shortchanged in. You know, there's some disadvantages and underperforming areas. And in that sense, we address the issues with the parents so that the parents can create a conducive learning atmosphere at home. And we always believe that uh, education should be from home to home. We don't distinguish home to school. So in that sense, we sort of uh, well these we bring a nice cohesive force where the parent, the teacher, and the child has a say in what's moving forward for the child. Wonderful, Mr. Ibrahim from Al Ghazali um, College. Thank you so much for your time. We are now actually going to move on to the um, to the most important part of this morning session which is actually getting started and getting started with this maths class because at the end of the day, we all here for the learners. I'm going to ask Mr. Um, Kota to take his seat, to get ready, to kind of like start that engine. I'm not too sure what car he's driving this morning. Um, I know he's been quite um, filled up with some caffeine already and um, I see him buckling um, in over there. So I'm hoping that all you learners online are ready. We've got quite a few. Um, we've got up to 100 and 95 viewers online at the moment. And Mr. Cortan doesn't need any sort of introduction, to be honest, because I think you guys know him much more better than what I do. Um, I'm hoping to walk away with something as well. Um, I am um, an English person. <laughs> I'm a communications person. I hate math mathematics, but I believe Mr. Cortan promised to kind of like change my views on this wonderful subject. So I'm putting him on screen there. You guys can see his beautiful face. He's the driving force behind the K-Way Institute, which offers tuition to high school learners. And is also the implementing agent for OCOF Essays Maths Upgrade Program since 2016. So, um, Mr. Kota, assalamu alaikum and good morning. Welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Fuyamwara Tumelan Kunjani. Welcome, Zanzi. And welcome to all our online learners and everybody from OCAF South Africa. Uh, our engines are well oiled and ignition is on. We're actually ready to kick off today's bumper session. Awesome, Mr. Mo, uh, Mr. Gortes. So I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to go off mute. I'm going to hand over to you. I will be back in a little bit. Enjoy the session, everyone. Jazakallah, Jazakallah, Jazakallah. Time to buckle up, time to warm up. I've got a big voice. I don't even know whether I should use this microphone. Microphone. <laughs> Put on my microphone. Or turn it off. I've got a big voice. I've got a deep voice. But anyway, here we go, here we go, here we go. Are you guys all ready? South Africa, are you ready? Great clouds, are you ready? I just want to say a warm welcome to all our live learners. We've got about 200, 250 learners here from Himalaya Secondary and Lodium Secondary uh, here in Pretoria, Centurion, Johannesburg, South Africa. And that's where we've been in from. Al Ghazali College in Centurion, Johannesburg, South Africa. Guys, let's get started. I know we've got lots of international learners, learners that are logging in from UK, from uh, the US, from Singapore, as well as from Australia. So let's take the show away, guys. I uh, just want to hear... Let's hear from StreamYard and let's hear from our people there in Cape Town. Can you guys hear me and see me absolutely clearly? Yeah, we're all good, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kay. Can go ahead. Absolutely. Okay, we started about 30 minutes late due to some uh, just getting, you know, it is day one, getting all the back end and getting everything sorted out. But I think we're all good to go. 
so according to our program, uh, I think, um, Shiraz, don't you want to just put up what today's program is on the screen? You can flag what we're going to be doing today is paper one. Today we're doing paper one, tomorrow paper two, tomorrow we start at 9 a.m. promptly. And uh, let's just see if we've got the... There we go. We're starting with sequences and series. I'm going to start off with some higher order algebra. Some few, three, four questions. And then sequences and series. Now we're going to move the schedule. Because we started 30 minutes late, we're going to go for break only at 11 o'clock. Okay? It's 9.30 now. We're going to push for one and a half hours. Everything's going to be moved about 30 minutes later because of our technical or our back end delay this morning. And then we'll go right through until... After break, we'll do finance, the whole grade 12, um, future value and present value annuity. Some of you have done it in school, some of you haven't. Don't stress. Then we take a break for lunch and we end off with functions and calculus. Tomorrow, paper two, uh, obviously analytics, circle analytics, trigonometry, Euclidean similarity and proportionality. What, will, what you will need for today, Shanaz, if you can... Flight us that screen of what they will need today. Please make sure that you are absolutely hydrated. Uh, scientific calculator, writing pad, pen, ruler. Please make sure you have water, sandwiches, fruit and snacks. Guys, you're welcome to eat while we work. Right? Remember, we need brain food. We need brain food. So make sure that you've got your thing. Only thing, don't bring your quotas and your scabanis and everything here in class. Please. Please. Just like fruits, snacks, sandwiches just to keep you going through the session. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're starting off with the first question and guys, I'm thinking of the hottest questions from the press. I'm talking about the maths rewrite paper that they wrote last week. You know the 2023 supplementary paper? One of the higher order questions that came out in there in algebra. Uh, I know many people in the country were struggling with this next question. So I thought I'll open up the session with this bumper question. And let's get started. We've got 1 over root 1 plus root 2 plus 1 over root 2 plus root 3 plus 1 over root 3 plus root 4. And it will continue like that. Plus root uh, 1 over. So let's just go back. Let me go back. Plus 1 over root 99 plus root 100. Have you guys seen this one? Ah, you haven't seen it. Hot off the press. Fresh, Baba, fresh. Right. Determine its value without the use of a calculator. Uh, eh? <laughs> you must see the faces dropping here. Find the value. Find the value of the above. No calculator. And it's worth four marks. Four to five marks, guys. Question, answer. Let's go, guys. Let's go. How are we doing there? How's our onlineers, uh, Shanaz? How are we doing there from, from Western Cape? Our onlineers all coming in. Remember, we've got about 200, 300, 400, 500 online registrations, but it doesn't mean that there are 500 eyeballs on screen. Like this year, it's one login and we've got 200 learners sitting behind it. So that means we've probably got about, probably, we're sitting on at about 3,000, 4,000 online viewers. So let's see from all the different schools. Hit us up in the comments. Tell us where you're logging in from, which schools are you logging in from, and uh, Shanaz can flight that for us through the program. Let's see, guys. I know you are all stressing. I know you are all stressing. Let's check the comments coming in on the side, guys. Hit us up with the comments. <laughs> they won't chow any quarters during the program. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I know you are stressing. I know you are fretting. What do we do with a situation like this? Now, this usually comes at the end of your algebra. This is even before we enter sequences and series, which we're going to be doing just now. Where do we begin? And you guys are the first cohort for 2023 that we're engaging in. Remember, this is not the only program, guys. This is not the only program. We're going to be hitting you up with another program before prelims with all your higher order questions and then hitting you up before finals. By then, like our friend Rory Sun last year, who got 100% for Maths Paper 1 and 2 after our K-Way program. So guys, I hope we're all moving towards that. 
I hope we're all moving. Right, let's see. Where do we begin? Now, whenever you see something like this, what you want to do is you want to rationalize the denominator. So in our answer, we know 1 over, let's take term 1. I'm taking term number 1. So root 1 is 1 plus root 2. Now, you've been taught in grade 11 how to rationalize the denominator. So what will we do? Now, let me tell you something. The memos work it out very differently. I'm working it out very differently. I don't work according to memos. We do it our style. We always use the logical approach. And then we see who's, we compete against each other. We see who's, whose way is better. Is our way better or the memos way better? So let's go. So somebody sent me this question in the week and I was sweating. I won't lie, I was sweating. And I said, okay, let's see if I use the logical approach. I didn't have the memo. They had the memo. They said, Mr. Kota, can you do this one for us? And this is the way I did it. And guess what? We got the same result. When they showed me the way the memo did it, oh my word, oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. It was a mass abortion. It was ugly. <laughs> so let's go. We rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply. We use what we call the conjugate. Conjugate means... 1 minus root 2 over 1 minus root 2. Yes or no? The same denominator over the same denominator, but we change the middle sign. Correct? So now numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Root 2 all over. We've got the difference of two squares. 1 times 1 is 1. Positive times negative is negative. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. What am I left with, guys? 1 minus root 2 over minus 1, right? They want us to speak the Queen's English. So what will that equal to? Minus 1 plus root 2. And there we go. That's 10 number 1. Yes or no? Let's do term number 2. What does term 2 look like? Let's do term 2. Let's rationalize term 2. 1 over root 2 plus root 3. I just wanted to see what is the pattern. So we multiply that by root 2 minus root 3 all over root 2 minus root 3. So we left with root 2 minus root 3, numerator times numerator, over root 2 times root 2 is 2, positive times negative is negative, root 3 times root 3 is 3. We left with root 2 minus root 3 over minus 1, which is minus root 2 plus root 3. I hope you're picking up the pattern. Can you guys all see and hear clearly? Now do it for do it for term number three also. Do it for term three. And what do you think term three is going to look like? Don't you think we got minus one plus root two? We got minus root three plus root three. What do you think term three is going to be? Minus root three plus root four. Yes or no? Hey, you are sharp like that. What do you think our last term is going to look like? Minus root 99 plus 10. The square root of 100 is 10. Yes or no? So that means let's rewrite what our sequence looks like. So term 1 is minus 1 plus root 2. Term 2 is minus root 2 plus root 3. Term 3 is minus root 3 plus root 4. And it's going to go on like that to minus root 99 plus 10. Yes or no? Are you following? Yes? Mr. Mr. K, we've got some comments coming in to say, can you please slow down a little bit? Um, because oh. you're moving too fast for our onliners. Okay, onliners, this is grade 11 work. We are rationalizing the denominator. Our term one. Okay, let's put a tick here for our onliners. Where I put the tick there. Onliners, do you all understand? Yes, Andrew Shabani, you following? Right. Let's see. Term one. Onliners, hit us up in the comments. Where I put the tick there. Did you understand how we rationalize the denominator? This is grade 11 work, not even grade 12. Yes. Tabo Bradley, you following? That is type one. Type one. Haha, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't know grade 11 ish. Right. Term 2. Term 2, we rationalize the denominator again. We get that. 
We have put a tick there. Onliners, are you following that? Hit us up in the comments. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Topi. Topi. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. You just forgot it, right? That's it. Yes. Let's look at term three. Term three, we rationalize the denominator and that's what we got. Because there's a pattern. Minus one plus root two. Minus root two plus root three. Minus root three plus root four. And it will continue. And the last term when we rationalize will be minus root 99 plus 10. Okay, I'm putting a tick there. So far, so good. So far, so good. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. Right, now watch. Let's rewrite the term again. So watch here. I'm just erasing that. I'm erasing that. I'm erasing that. Let's rewrite the pattern. Let's erase that. Let's erase that. Some of you can't see. So let's erase that. Okay. So we've taken all that out. We've taken all of this out. Let's rewrite this, guys. Let's rewrite this. Let's rewrite this. Okay. So here goes. Term number one is minus one plus root two. Term number two is minus root 2 plus root 3. Term number 3 is minus root 3 plus root 4. And it's going to go on to minus root 99 plus the square root of 100 is 10. Can you all see that? Let's check our onlineers. Hit us up in the comments. Can you see that? Can you see that? We've rationalized each term. We've rationalized each term. Now, now, plus root 2 minus root 2 will cancel. Plus root 3 minus root 3. Plus root 4 minus root 4 will cancel. Plus root 99 minus 4. So everything in the middle will cancel. What am I left with? Minus 1 plus 10. What is my answer? 9. Wabon. Wabon. You are checking. <laughs> These are your eyes. You are in grade 12 now, guys. If you don't know, you know how to rationalize a denominator. How do we rationalize a denominator? So if I told you 2 over 5 minus root 3, how do you rationalize this denominator from grade 11? You multiply it by 5 plus root 3 over 5 plus root 3. Yes or no? Then we do numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So we left with 2 into 5 plus root 3 all over. This is a difference of two squares. So 5 times 5 is 25 minus 3. The final answer will be 2 into 5 plus root 3 all over. 25 minus 3 is how much? 22, 2 goes into 2 ones, 2 goes into 22, 11. Guys, this is grade 11 work, man. This is grade 11 work. I cannot be teaching you grade 11 in grade 12. That's how you rationalize the denominator. So I did that for each of the first three terms. You all following? Yeah, on, uh, on siters, give me a thumbs up. You all understood what we did? Good. Good. Let's check our onlineers. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm clearing the frame. The answer here is nine. I just showed you a grade 11 concept. I'm going to show you guys just now a shortcut on how to do inequalities. Right, these are our higher order questions, man. These are the questions generally which you would normally get wrong in your exam. Can I clear the frame? You all took it down? Good, 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 good. Check the next one. Determine the roots of P. So let's take this one down. Let's take this one. This is question number two. Higher order question. Find the value of values of P. Find the value of values of P. If the roots of, if the roots of 
Px squared minus 10x plus 3 equals 0 are uh, in the ratio, are uh, in the ratio, 3 is to 2. And it's worth five, 6 months. This is your, one of your last questions from a paper. So come on, liners. I told you it was a cold morning this morning. It was a cold morning and I told you Max is going to warm you up. It's time here to warm your brains up. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Guys, we've got a lot of work to do today. We've got the entire, we've got the entire paper one to do. So we've got a lot of questions to do. Let's see what you do with this. The roots are in the ratio three is to two. Give it a go, guys. Give it a go. Give it a go. Yes, Andrew, nature of roots, of course. The roots are in the ratio 3 is to 2. So we know x is equal to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Guys, I cannot go slower than this. You know this work. Must I still teach you how to use the quadratic formula in grade 12? So shy. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Guys, if your quality of video is bad, it means your internet connection is bad, go out and come back in. Go out and come back in. Right, so we know. Guys, I cannot be teaching you this from scratch. That's A. That's B. That's C. So minus B. Minus minus 10. Plus minus the square root. B squared minus 10 squared minus 4. A is P. C is 3 all over 2A, 2P. This is equal to 10 plus minus the square root. Guys, I cannot be going slower than this. If you don't know how to use the quadratic formula, go and do diet maths, maths light. Right, so there are our two roots. There are our two roots. X is equal to that. But they say the roots are in the ratio 3 is to 2. Three is to two. Let's go. We're not yet done. Let's go. Let's go. Finish up here. Let's see what you do. Right? I'm I'm pausing. I give you a chance to figure this one out. We know fast ten or fast eleven or fast twelve got released last night. How are we doing there? What's happening? Can you guys hear me and see me clearly? I don't know what happened to our... Are we good? Yeah, I can, we... yeah, I can see, see you. Yeah. Okay, everything good there? Right, lots of work to be done from here. Lots of work to be done from here. Right, I'm moving over to the next page because we need space. So we've got x is equal to, what was it? If I go back. It was 10 plus minus 100 minus 12p. So let's go. X is equal to 10 plus minus the square root of 100 minus 12p all over 2p. 
2p and it's in the ratio 3 is to 2 yes or no right so that means it must be in the ratio 3 over 2 yes or no so what are our two roots our two roots is 10 plus the square root of 100 minus 2p all over 2p divided by divided by remember that's your first solution 10 minus the square root of 100 minus 12p all over 2p that's the numerate numerator over denominator the positive root over the negative root so it's the positive one divided by the negative one so far so good are you guys following good onlineers are you following how can i be moving fast the roots are in the ratio three over two it means your brains are still asleep if i'm moving too fast your brains are still asleep now how do we do the algebra with the pen times 10 plus the square root of 100 minus 12p divided by 2p tip and times multiplied by 2p all over 10 minus the square root of 100 minus 12p is equal to 3 over 2. Got right? Was it over 12p or over 2p? Let us go back. Over 2p. All right, let's go. The 2p and the 2p cancels out. So what do we get now? Mr. K, there's a comment um, coming in Let's online see. about that. Um, how did the 12 because change? Because the two, two roots are in the ratio 3 over 2. The positive root, they tell you that the roots are in the ratio 3 over 2. So that's your positive root divided by your negative root. Your two roots are in the ratio 3 over 2. Does that answer your question? Sonyeo. Let's go back. What happened to negative 10? Negative times negative becomes a positive. Right, you're good, you're good, you're good. Right, so let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So now, so now we've got 10 plus the square root of 100 minus 12p all over 10 minus the square root of 100 minus 12p is equal to 3 over 2. You all follow that? Right? This numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Now we cross multiply. Now we cross multiply. So 2 into 10 plus 100 minus 12p is equal to 3 into 10 minus the square root of 100 minus 12p. I'm putting a tick there. Are you following? Let's multiply it all out. Multiply it all out. So what do we have? What do we have? We're not yet done. So 2 times 10 is 20. Plus 2 into the square root of 100 minus 12p is equal to 3 times 10 is 30 minus 3 into the square root of 100 minus 12p. We're solving for p. The question said solve for p. The question said solve for p. This is a higher order question. 
This is a higher order question, grade 12. If you are not ready for questions like this for your exams, then you are not ready. Now, I'm just going to move over. I still need more space. So it's 20 plus 2. Let's go on. So we got, what, what does it just call it out for me? 20 plus 2 into square root 100 minus 12p is equal to 30 minus 3 into 100 minus 12p. Yes or no? Now, we all, now we're going to solve for p. So we're going to say 2 square root 100 minus 12p plus 3 square root 100 minus 12p is equal to 30 minus 20. If you're going to ask me to redo this, you need to go back to grade 8. So 2 plus 3 is 5 square root 100 minus 12p is equal to 30 minus 20 is how much? 10. We're solving for P. So square root 100 minus 12P is equal to 10 divided by 5. And 10 divided by 5 is 2. So we're left with square root of 100 minus 12P is equal to 2. I'm putting a tick there. Do you all understand? Yes. Let's check our onlineers. Are you moving with us? Rabia already got an answer. P is equal to 8. Let's check. Yes, Dua Munaf. It's not that difficult. 100%. You're absolutely correct. It's not hard at all. So now square this side, square that side. 100 minus 12P is equal to 2 squared is 4. Minus 12P is equal to 4 minus 100. Minus 12p is equal to minus 96. Divide by minus 12, divide by minus 12. What is p equal to? 8. You are absolutely correct. Let's see who got that one. Who got that answer there? Akila got it right. Nkolisi got it right. Nkolisi. Rabia got it right. Wasila got it right. Pule Piri got it right. Well done, well done, well done. Now remember, I don't know at what level you are. Some of you are at level one, some of you are at level four. Level one, it's time to up your game, to put on your big boy boots. Right, so what I'm going to do, you've taken this one, let me do this, let me go back. Some of you, this is where we started. We started here. Now remember, these sessions are recorded and it's going to go up onto YouTube on Monday. So you can watch this over and over and over until you understand what's going on. What's happening today is just to make sure you understand. So we solve for X. Slide number two. The two roots were in the ratio three over two. Remember, three is to two is three divided by two. The two roots, the positive and negative, we're in the, they telling you the two roots, root number one over root number two must give me three over two. So there we go. Root number one, let's do it in a different color. Root number one divided by root number two must equal to three over two. So what do we do when we divide? We tip in times, am I right? So that's all I did. I tipped in times. So we got that. Root 1 over root 2 equals 3 over 2. Now we cross multiply. Now we cross multiply to get an equation. And all we do in the equation is solve for P in the equation. Let's go to frame number 3. If you've taken this one down. There we go. There's frame number 3. After cross multiplying, we get that. And all we do is we solve for P as in a normal equation. And there we go, we are done. Now I can see many of you are battling because your algebra is messed up. If you cannot get your algebra right, you can't get anything right. Thank you, let's see. 
It's only six marks. They're not going to give you 12 marks or 20 marks for one question. Boy to Melo, I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. I hope you're understanding. I promise you, many of you are seeing me for the first time. You'll get used to my system. Don't worry. I will make sure you understand everything. Kaufela. I will not go on to the next question until you understand it properly. Even if it takes me a little bit more time. So let's go, guys. Let's go. Right. Let me teach you something. For the whole of South Africa, I'm teaching you a new concept. K-Way students, you know this. Those of you who have um, done my NBT or who have got my videos or my video kit, you guys know this. But I need to do this for the whole of South Africa. We need to show you how to do inequalities. It's very important for the two value inequality and for the three value inequality. So let's do inequalities. I'm going to show you a system on how to do inequalities. Now put down your pens and listen carefully. Otherwise, you're going to tell, you're going to miss it and you're going to tell me, hey, ma, this man here, this bald Indian, he's moving too fast. Now we know inequalities, any number less than or less than or equal to zero is negative. Yes or no? We know any number greater than or greater than or equal to zero is positive. Yes or no? The question is going to say solve for X. Yes or no? Now the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to use this in question one. We're going to use quadratics in your quadratic number pattern. We're going to use inequalities throughout mathematics. We're even going to use it in calculus when we get to calculus later on. So you need to pay attention and pay attention carefully. Right. I want you to remember something. Just remember this acronym. Pause or neck bet. Pause or neck bet. If it's negative, X lies between two points. So this is the rule on the side. So say it after me. Say pause or neck bet. Ah, come on, you can't be so boring. Say it louder. No, the whole of South Africa wants to hear you say it. Right, so let's start with the neck bet first. Watch here. Question. Solve for X, right? X squared minus 2X minus 8 less than or equal to 0. Right, so let's factorize. You know in school, they taught you like this. You need to factorize. Guys, if you don't know how to factorize, go back to grade 8. What are my two critical values? X minus 4 equals to 0. X is equal to 4. X plus 2 equals to 0. X is equal to minus 2. Yes or no? Now watch what we do. Put your pens down. Onliners, put your pens down. Do not just listen to what I'm telling you. Put your pens down. Whoa. Am I moving too fast here? You know this. Yo, this was grade 11 work. So step number one. Shh. Do that. Minus two, four. Are you all okay with that? Now it's less than zero. Less than zero is what? And where must X lie? So you put X between. And now you copy and paste. X, X, four, four. Minus two, minus two. You use the same sign. Oh, game over. There's your five marks. Take this one down. We're not doing the positive one. I'm, I'm doing the negative one first. So neg less than zero is negative. X must lie between the two points. So neg bet. Neg bet. I'm teaching you systems here. I'm not here just to do questions. I'm showing you how to do it. Onliners. Onliners. I hope you're following. Guys, am I talking too fast here? I got 200 learners that are telling me to pick up the pace and I got some online learners that say, sir, you're moving too fast. Joe, this is grade 12. What are you going to do when you get to university and the lecturers are talking to you? You're going to say, redo the lesson. <laughs> you got jokes. 
You know so much love. <laughs> that one. That one. Right. I'll do another example for you. I hope you took. So we're learning the system. What's the system for inequalities? Paws on, neck back. Right. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. x into x minus 1 less than 12. Let's do this one. Let's all do it together. It's also neck bet. Remember, we're not doing the pause or now. We're only doing the negative one. So let's do it together. Onlineers, do it with me. Let's do it together. x times x, x squared minus x. Positive 12 will come on that side as minus 12 less than 0. I'm putting a tick and I'm stopping. Onlineers, was that too fast? Onlineers, was that too fast? I think, Mr. Gota, I think brackets, you... Was that too fast? Sure. I think right. you found a face that actually Offline works with there. everyone, so... <laughs> right. They are playing games on there. Less than zero. X, X. What are your factors of 12 to give you a 1? 4 and 3. Minus plus. What are what your two critical values? Plus four and minus three. I'm putting a tick. You understand that? Right. We do a rough parabola. Minus three there. Four there. Less than zero is negative. Where must X lie? Between the two points. Copy and paste. X, four, minus three. Use the same sign. There we go. That's our final answer. Onlineers, how many of you got that one right? How many of you got that one right? Let's see how many of you got that one correct. That's the negative one. Let's see in the comments who got that one right. You all got it. Thanks, David. Muiz. Vernon. Quite simple. Of course it's simple. I will show you the simplest ways to do things, guys. Well done, Palesa. Well done, Palesa. Roughly enough, well done. Rowan. Correct. Well done, Wasila. Well done. Right. So that was the negative one. Let's do the positive one. Let's do pause or. So this was neg bet. Let's do pause or. Positive, we use the word or. Positive, we do use the word or. So let's, do, let's make up one. X squared minus 2X minus 15, greater than or equal to 0. Let's factorize that. X, X. Factors of 15 to give you a 2, 5, and 3. Minus plus. Plus 5, minus 3. Put down your pens. Would you agree with me? Up till here, it's exactly the same for positive or negative. Yes or no? Yes or no? Right, now look in a final answer. Greater than zero, is it positive or negative? And what's the rule for positive? So instead of putting bet, we put or. To the right, greater than or greater than or equal to, it will always look. So for all, your arrows point in the opposite direction. For negative, it points in the same direction. Now you take your, so it will always look like this for the positive one, for all. Take the bigger number, put it there. Take the smaller number, put it there. And there's your final answer. Because any number to the right is positive, any number to the left is positive. And there we go, we are done. Finito. Game over. As simple as that. I don't think, you guys are all smart individuals, you rocket scientists, I don't need to show you 50 examples of the same type. Right, let's see. I'm giving you one to do. Do the next one on your own x into x minus 2 greater than 8. Go for it. Solve for x. 
solve for x. Then I'm going to show you one from a past paper. We're going to do two higher order questions after this. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, we're not fighting. We always fight. Yes, the memo never explains. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to explain to you how it's done. We are fighting with Mads. We got a big fight ahead. Title fight. Mike Tyson coming up in June prelims and finals. Come on, guys. You should be done with this in under 10 seconds. It shouldn't take you more than 10 seconds to do this problem. When you're done, put down your pens. Let's see. on -siters. When you're done, put down your pens. And when you think you, when you're done, don't say you think you're right. Say you know you're right. Do you think you're right or you know you're right? You know you're right. Let's go. Can I do it for you? Ah, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We got to use pause or net bet in our final answer. Sianda do bet. Let's go. So x squared minus 2x minus 8 greater than 0. Let's break that up. Greater than 0. I think you'll pick up my pace now. I take a little bit of time to get used to, but once you're used to me, don't worry. Downloading will happen at the speed of light. So what's our two critical values? Plus 4 minus 2. Now we go here. You have to do this for inequalities. These are your critical values. Minus 2 there, plus 4 there. Greater than 0. Is it positive or negative? And what's the rule? Or to the right, x greater than. To the left, x less than. Yes or no? The 4 goes there. The minus 2 goes there. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Bob's your auntie. Are you done? Did you get that one right? Well done, Palesa. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, Wendell. I can see you guys are engaging now. You are activating now. Yeah, well done, Rowan. You got eight and five. Don't worry. You'll get you'll get Audi rings in your report. Well done. Eight and five. Where he gets eight and five? Which planet? Mercury, Venus, or Uranus? <laughs> right, we're done with that. Watch this. Here comes the higher order. Watch this. Watch this. What if they told you x plus 2 over x minus 5 less than or equal to 0? For 4 marks, solve for x. Let's do it together. I'll show you a trick. I'll show you a trick. That's what I'm here to do in every topic to show you how it's done. Put down your pens. Let's do it together. Shh. Right. Onlineers, put down your pens. Follow. <laughs> Rabia, you funny. Let's go. <laughs> what are your two critical values? It's already factorized. So minus 2 plus 5. Yes or no? So all you do, you do that. That. Minus 2 is your lower number. 5 is your higher number. Less than 0 is negative. So neg bet. X is there. Watch. Wait. X, 5. X, X. 5, 5. Minus 2, minus 2. Use the same sign. But wait. It's a fraction. Can X equal to 5? Plus 5, minus 5 equals 0. Can I get 0 in a denominator of a fraction? So all you do, x can't equal to 5. So you take away the 1 equal to sign next to 5. That's your final answer. x can be any number, but x can't equal to 5. So all you do in a fraction is you remove the equal to sign next to the critical value that makes your denominator 0. Because then it will become undefined. 
There we go. That's your final answer. You'll get full marks for that. That's your final answer. X can't equal to 5. X can be any number, but X can't equal to 5. Because it will make the denominator 0. And you can't have 0 in a denominator of a fraction. So let's give you 1 to do. 2X minus 1 over X plus 3. Greater than or equal to 0. Solve for X here. I'm giving you guys another example to do. Those of you who are activated, come guys. You have to have fun during maths. Yes, you have to laugh during it, but you've got to learn. The main thing is that you are learning. That's it, Topi. Let's dala. Let's dala maths. We are a family here. We one big united South African family mastering the content and the techniques to get a distinction in math. Welcome to Kway. This is how we dala maths. Kway and Okaf teaching you to become a haunting man. Score cop. You should be done. Let's see who's a boss. Let's see who got the next one right. Now, this is the last one with two. Then I'm going to show you one that came out of a past paper. Guys, today I'm here to make you varam in content so that you master what I teach you. By now you should be done. So we got 2x minus 1 over x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. So 2x minus 1 equals to 0. We're finding our critical values. So 2x equal 1, x equal a half. Or, so x is equal to a half or x is equal to minus 3. Yes or no? On situs, bums on seat. Yes or no? Good. So in our answer, all we do, we do that. Lower value first. Higher value second. Greater than or equal to zero, pause or x greater than or equal to or x less than or equal to. Put the half there. Put the minus three there. Can x equal to minus three? No. So what do I do? Remove the one equal to sign. Game over. Show of hands here from my 200 learners. How many of you got it right? Well done. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Come on. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Let's see, on uh, onlineers, I know we get lots of trolls, so don't worry. The trolls will give us stupid answers. One will give us an answer of 20 and the other one of minus 60. Well done, Mr. Troll. You'll pass nicely. Well done, Rabia. Well done, well done, well done. Mshlanka Nipo. Rowan, did you get it? Offense is asking. Narishka, well done, well done, well done, well done. Right, I'm deleting. Right, what happens if you get three values? What happens if you get x plus 2, x minus 3, x plus 5, Less than or equal to zero, solve for x. Now pay attention. I'm going to show you how. Don't use the table method. Don't use the number line. Don't use the other method. For the quadratic, you use what I taught you. Pause or neck bet. If you're going to use the table method, it will help you, no problem, to fail. <laughs> Roughly, how's that for being frank? Right, so we got three x values. Watch here, guys. Put down your pens, onliners and on -siters. What are your CVs here? Minus two, plus three, minus five. Yebo. Now it's three values. Three values is always a cube. So you put the lower number there, minus five. You put minus two, and you put three. Right? In order. Lowest to highest. Less than zero means below. 
Where is this graph below your x-axis? Where is it below? It's below there and it's below there. So put x there and put x there. Copy and paste. x, 3, minus 2. We use the same sign. Or to the left, to the left, to the left, x less than or equal to minus 5. Final answer. You get your answer in 5 seconds. Take it down. Take it down. Learn. I beg you guys, learn. You're going to see this in your exam. You enjoying it so far on Citus? Onliners, are you following? The lowest diagram. Go to F1, you'll pick it up at Lewis Hamilton Paddock. Right, let's see. So I'm going to give you one to do on your own, right? You took down the question? No? Okay, I'll wait for you. What is the time? You're 10.30 already. Don't look at the time. Before you know it, you're on first break already. We didn't even get to do sequences and series. Sure. We can start with sequences and series because I still got something else for you to do. We're going to go for break at 11 o'clock. Don't worry. Before you know it, you're on, you're on break. And before you know it, today is done. Welcome to K-Way. Welcome to the way we dollar maths. Right. Let's see. I want you to do this one on your own. X plus one x minus 3 over x plus 4 less than or equal to 0. Do it the same. Do it the same way. Do it the same way. Put your CVs, draw your cubic graph, look where it's below and then, but there's a fraction, x can't equal to minus 4. So what are your critical values? Minus 1, plus 3, minus 4. That, that, minus 4, minus 1, 3. Less than 0 below. Below there and below there. x, 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 3, minus 1. Guys, mathematics is about three things. S-A-N, work, S for speed, work fast. A for work accurate, algebra. And N, work neatly. Okay, I'm trying to work neat. Huh. Or X less than or equal to minus four. Can X equal to minus four, guys? No. So we take away. There we go. Did you all get that right? That's your final answer. Got that right? Right. We're wrapping up with the inequalities. I'm giving you one that came out of a past paper. Remember, this is June exam prep. So I can't only show you the easy stuff. I got to show you the stuff that's going to make your brains work. Otherwise, you wasted your whole weekend with me. Onlineers, you got it right. Jada Governor, well done. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Yep, yep. Rabia Kesem, right. Well done, guys. Well done, onlineers. Well done, onsiteers. Aquila Creations, yes, sir. Watch the next one. Check the next one out. Check the next one out. Guys, I can sit with you guys till 10 o'clock tonight. You want to sit till 10 and do maths? Yes. 3 to the power x into x minus 5. Less than 0. Solve for x. Have you come across this one? Some of you have. Some of you haven't. How about we do 24-hour maths? Non-stop. From 
Let's go, let's go. Why you guys cracked this one here? I just want to tell you guys, you guys are an amazing crowd. I'm seeing you guys working so nicely here. Inshallah, we're going to get our distinction. Even if you get 60, those of you who are level ones, even if you get 50 now in June, it's fine. <laughs> by, by prelim, you should be 70s. And with us, by the finals, you should be 95 plus. Amin. Never seen this one before. Right, come I show you something. Shh. Come I show you. Right, put your pens down. Put your pens down. Otherwise, you're going to mess it. Watch. You got two roots. In, right, watch here. You got three to the x less than zero. And you got x minus five less than zero. Yes or no? 3 to the x is a positive exponential graph. Can it ever be less than 0? No. So it's, that's the, your answer is x less than 5. <laughs> Game over. The positive exponential graph can never be less than 5, uh, less than 0. How? 3 to the x. 3 to the x is a positive exponential graph. That's the graph 3 to the x. Can it ever be less than 0 here? So that one is out. Not applicable. Not valid. Doesn't exist. So x minus 5 less than 0. x less than 5. It's only 3 marks. You do it just the way I did it here. I'm not doing rough calculation. The way I do it here is the way you answer it in your exam. I'm showing you templates. So there, your inequalities is done. Higher order algebra is done. Let's start with some sequences and series. And sigma notation. We're going to start with it now. We're going to start with it. I need to give you a mind map. You need to learn the mind map. You need to learn the mind map. <laughs> it's no blue cow. It's a new one. It's the red cow. Red? No, no. It's the black bull. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Now pay attention. Shh. Sequences. In order to master sequences, you need to know sequences are broken up into arithmetic and geometric. Arithmetic Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Don't tell me I'm moving too fast. It means if you tell me at this point I'm moving too fast, it means you haven't been at school this year. You were smoking in the toilet. <laughs> Right. We also know we got the common difference formula. T3 minus T2 is equal to T2 minus T1. Formula, formula. You got to know it by memory. We also know, for example, I want something I want you to know. When they tell you the 10th term or T10 is known as A plus 9D. So the 20th term, A plus 19D. The fifth term, A plus 4D. You minus 1. The tenth term, A plus 9D. Geometric, Tn equals AR to the power N minus 1. It's got a common ratio. T3 over T2 equals T2 over T1. T10 is known as AR to the power N minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 1. Nine. Learn that. Learn this. These mind maps that I'm giving you, we're going to be applying it when we do our problems. So this is the one on sequences. I'm going to give you one on series. And I'll show you how to remember the formula. And I'll show you where to apply it. Onlineers, I hope you've taken all this down. 
Take this one down, guys. Take this one down. Just learn it exactly the way I give it to you because that's the way we're going to be applying it. Close the mic. Have you guys got it? Did you take it down? Gosh. Help. Right. Let's go on to series. I hope you took this one down, guys. Can you guys hear me and see me clearly? Onliners, are we all okay? How's Puffy? Thank you. Work with me. You can see me. I can't see you. <laughs> no break time now, Josephine. 11 o'clock. We're now going on to, we're clearing. Let's go on to series. Let's go on to series. When we sum a sequence becomes a series. Separated by a positive or negative. Series is broken up into two parts. What? Arithmetic and geometric? No. Finite. One that ends. An infinite or infinite. One that doesn't end. Right, put your pens down. Let's go through all the formulas here. You've got to learn this. Infinite, uh, finite is broken up into two parts. Arithmetic and geometric. Arithmetic is broken up into two parts. One where the last term given. And you all know the SN formula. SN equal N over 2 into A plus L. For last term. Or the last term not given. Sn equal n over 2 into. Do not tell me I'm moving too fast. These are formulas. You know it. 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Geometric broken up into two parts. One where r is greater than 1. One where r is a whole number. Sn equals a into r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Or one where r is less than 1 but greater than minus 1 where r is a fraction. Sn equals a into 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Now put your pens down. That's finite. Like I said, finite series broken up into two parts. Finite broken up into two parts, arithmetic and geometric. Arithmetic broken up into two parts. Last term given, last term not given. Geometric broken up into two parts where R is a whole number or where R is a fraction. Are you following? Good. Infinite is only geometric. So whenever it's an infinite, it's only because you cannot sum an arithmetic infinite. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 going on to infinity. Find me the sum. You can't. So infinite, it, two things will happen to infinity. It will either, the R, so if it's geometric, we're looking at R. If R is less than 1 but greater than minus 1, it means it converges. If R is a fraction, it con if r is a fraction less than 1 greater than minus 1 it converges if r is greater than 1 if r is a whole number it diverges what does it mean converge means as i add more and more terms the sum will come like here we are converging we are coming together Diverges means as I add more and more terms, the sum will move away from a number. And we only got two formulas. S to infinity equals A over convergent 1 minus R. A is your first term. Or S to infinity is equal to A over R minus 1 for divergent. And there we go. Take this one down. Take the series down. So we got your sequences. We got your series. 
let's start applying let us start applying let's take a photo here of all our on-siteers over 200 learners from all the different schools here our side i'll send it through to okaf and later on they can post it up all on the groups or maybe it even can come up here on site or online online are you all okay let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go guys if you feel i know a lot of people are going to talk a whole lot of rubbish in the comments ignore the comments pay attention to what i have to teach you Just listen to what I say. What I tell you is going to get you your distinction. The rubbish that they post will help you to what? To fail. So you took this down. Now we need to learn the concept of logs. Remember, for geometric, N is in the power. So whenever an unknown is in the power, we need to know logs. So let me quickly teach you the system on logs. Before we start activating what exam style questions. You've taken it down on liners. Can I clear the frame? Can I clear the frame? Can I clear the frame? I hope you took it down. Some of you are messing around. You'll know in the exam. You'll remember what I tell you in the exam you will pray you would have paid attention today now if i tell you 2 to the power x is equal to 9 solve for x so whether it's 2 to the x or 2 to the n equal 9 it's the same thing whenever you have an unknown in the power and you cannot make the basis the same we use logs to solve for x or to solve for n, we use log. So we attach a log. So log 2 to the x is equal to log 9. What we do to the left, we do to the right. I'm putting a tick. Do you all understand that? Good. The first rule of logs is we take the x, the power, and it becomes the base. So we got x log 2 equals log 9. Are you following? x is equal to log 9 divided by log 2 check on your calculators log 9 divided by log 2 3 comma 1 6 9 9 blah 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 x is equal to 3 comma 1 7 so whenever you have x the same thing will happen here i'll show you an example of this you want an exam example of this what sequences in Hi, Mr. K. I don't know if you can hear us, but we have some audio problems on your side. We can't hear you clearly. So I don't know if you can just double check um, the settings on your end, um, but we're struggling to hear you on the side. Am I back in? Yeah, perfect. We can hear you now. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. We just went on to load shedding and the generator kicked in. So, yeah, we got to deal with what South Africa has to throw at us, right? 
Okay, I'm deleting here. That's easy. So here goes. Check this one out. The geometric sequence 1, 3 over 2, 9 over 4, dot, 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 dot has a term equal to 8. What is the number of this term in the sequence? Four marks. The geometric sequence. Shanaz, how are we doing there? Everything all okay? Can you guys hear me and see me clearly? Onliners, are we okay? Are we back online? We had a little uh, bit of a glitch here on our side, but yeah, I think we're all good. Let's we all good. Hear some of back are you guys in? Are you in? Are you in? Yes, let's yes, have bloody escort. Right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're back in, we're back in, we're back in. Right, let's do this. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. So in your answer, it's a sequence, it's geometric. Tn equals ar to the power n minus 1. Yes or no? Right. It has a term equal to 8. So 8 is equal to. What is A? 1. What is R? 3 over 2 divided by 1. R is equal to 3 over 2 divided by 1, which is equal to 3 over 2. To the power N minus 1. Divide by 1, divide by 1. So 8 is equal to 3 over 2 is 1,5 to the power N minus 1. Now we attach our logs. Attach a log, attach a log. So log 8 is equal to log 1,5 to the power n minus 1. Now n minus 1 comes in front of the log. So I'm just going to do it here on the side. So n minus 1 log 1,5 is equal to log 8. So n minus 1 is equal to log 8 divided by log 1,5. n minus 1 is equal to log 8 divided by log, log 1,5, 5,13. So n equals 6,13. We take the one on the other side. n can't be a decimal, therefore your sixth term... Um, is equal to 8. Boom. And there we go. You got 4 to 5 marks for that. Are you following? Onliners, are you following? Are you following? Guys, if you guys got a bit of a bad connection, we're moving at super high speed internet here. So please just log out and come back in. Did you guys get this one right? There we go. There we go. Right. Right, let's go here. Can I erase? All got it? Onliners? Did you all get it? Can I clear the frame? Can I put up another one? You ready for me? Good. Guys, you need to be working. You guys need to be working. You guys need to be working. Right. Let's go. Uh, an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence. has a 30th term 
of 100 and a fifth term of 4. Find the sum of the first 10 terms. or eight marks. Right, here goes. So two random terms are given, guys. And they want the sum. So look what's, what you must do in the exam, guys. What you need to do, you say 30th term of 100, you underline that, the fifth term of four. So they're giving you two random terms, yes or no? Now they want the sum. So you firstly, step number one, you need to find the sequence. After you find the sequence, these are your steps. Now find the sum. So let's find the sequence. T30 is known as a plus 29d you know what let's make it guys uh let's make it so we don't work but fact you make it has a 31st term so change this as a 31st term as a 31st term so t31 is a plus 30d i want to try and work with even numbers a plus 30d is equal to 100. A fifth term, T5. What did I say? What is T5 known as, guys? A plus 4D is equal to how much? 4. Let's check. Equation number 1, equation number 2. We're finding the sequence. So I need to find A and D. So I'm going to subtract the two. Simultaneous equations, I'm going to subtract the two. So A minus A is 0. 30 minus 4 is how much? 26. 100 minus 4 is how much? 96. D is equal to 96 over 26, which is equal to... Right. Let me get my calculator. What is 96 over 26? Ninety six over twenty six. Where's my calculator? There's my calculator. Ninety six over twenty six. So let's go. Ninety six. Wait, I can't see. Here we go. Ninety six divided by twenty six gives you forty eight over thirteen. Three comma six nine. Three comma six nine. So I'm going to call it three comma seven. So A plus 4D, so that's your D. So A plus 4 into 3 comma 7, I'm substituting in here, is equal to 4. A plus, so 3 comma 7 times 4, 14 comma 8 is equal to 4. A is equal to 4 minus 14 comma 8. Minus 10, 8. So if your first term, right. So now they told you find the sum of the first 10 terms. That means it's finite. Now we go to that mind map I gave you. Finite arithmetic last term not given. So Sn equals n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Can you see what we're doing? Can you see how we're using that mind map I showed you? So S to how many terms? 10 terms is equal to 10 over 2 into 2. A is minus 10 comma 8 plus 10 minus 1 is 9. Your common difference is 3 comma 7. So S10 will equal to Here's our final answer coming up. Push this into your calculator. 
five open brackets, two open brackets, minus 10, comma, eight closed brackets, plus nine open brackets, three, comma, seven closed brackets, closed brackets, 58, comma, five. And that's your final answer. I hope you all got that. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Onlineers, are you following? Are you getting it right? Yes, Apiwe, 58,5. We're going for break just now. Well done, Rudzani. We're going for break in three minutes. Let me give you one more. One quick one before break. Let's give you one quick one before break. We're going for break. We're going to come back. We'll continue with sequences. It's just that today, day one, the technical, everything, we started half an hour late. So don't worry. Hang in there with us, guys. Hang in there. Well done, Jacques Grunewald. Well done, Boo. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm clearing the frame. I hope you all took this one down. Right. Watch this one. Let's do one last one. The sum of 10 terms, the sum of 10 terms of an arithmetic sequence is 50. The second and fifth terms add up to 10. Find the series for seven marks. This will be the last one we're going to do before break. We'll come back, we'll do more. And then we'll still do some, what do you call this? Sigma notation. Very important, sigma notation. We're going for break just now, guys. We got two minutes. You think we can crack this in two minutes? No, yes, we got two minutes. We're going for break now. Asprilla, J King. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, this is the way we do it. The sum of 10 terms. So now, whenever they give you two stories, you see they give you sum of 10 terms is 50. That's story number one or equation number one. Story number two, equation number two. Yes or no? So story number one, S10 equals 50. Story number two, the second and fifth, so T2 plus T5. The second and fifth terms add up to 10. Story number two. Yes or no? Now let's convert this to language. If it's arithmetic, I need to convert it to A and D. If it's geometric, I need to convert it to A and R. Yes or no? So let's do this. S, N equals n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 times d. So 50 is equal to 10 over 2 into 2a plus 10 minus 1 is 90. 50 is equal to 10 divided by 2 is how much? 5 into 2a plus 90. So therefore 2a plus 9d is equal to 50 minus 5 is 45. And that's equation number one. Yeah, boy, yes. T2, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yo, yo. I was just checking if you're paying attention. 50 divided by 5 is, with 50 divided by 5 is how much? 10. T2 is A plus 1D plus. T5, A plus 4D, is equal to 10. Yes or no? A plus A, 
2a plus 5t is equal to 10. That's equation number 2. So now I'm going to say 2a plus 5t is equal to 10. I should have made this 100. Okay, so 2a minus 2a, so I'm going to subtract. 2a minus 2a is 0. 9 minus 5 is 4d is equal to 0. d is equal to 0. Right? 0 divided by 4 is 0. And then 2a plus 5d equals 10. d equals 0. 2a plus 5 into 0 is equal to 10. 2a equals 10. a equals 5. So find the series. Your first term is 5. <laughs> it's got a common difference of 0. So the next one is 5. 5. So find the series. So we can't put semicolon. We must put plus. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus dot, 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 dot. There's your series. Yeah, boy. It's break time. It's 11.02. I know this was the much anticipated, much awaited break. You guys are sitting bums on seats for the past two hours. Don't worry. Yeah, well, you're sitting here from 9 o'clock. Or some of you are here from 7 o'clock. Right, we're going for break. We're going for break. We're going for break. Thanks, Mr. Kota. I am going to... Asanae's just joined us, so surprise. <laughs> My man! My man! Oh, so, Misty, I'm I'm so pleased that you've been in the capable hands of Shanaz Ibrahim, and she's Hello, been doing an amazing job this morning. I reviewed. You're the, very quiet there. The, we can't hear you so clearly on the side. As an name. Can no, you hear me so? now? Can you hear me now? Shanaz, speak. Um, I I can hear Hassanain quite clearly. Oh, you um, can hear Hassanain. Maybe there's a problem yeah, let, on my side. Let me just see if I add the other stream. Um, there uh, we go, there you. we go, there we go. There we go. Right, we're taking 30 minutes, guys. We're taking 30 minutes. We'll see you at 11.35. We shall see you at 11.35. So I'm just going to go up. Maybe we can put that there. I'm clearing the frame. Session 2 resumes at 11.35. Session 2, session 2, 11.35 a.m. Enjoy your break. Okay, Shanaz, maybe we can reflect a little bit on how the session started and the enthusiasm. Mr. Man, what we're going to do, we'll be able to, everybody's rushing to go and get their food. We'll try and arrange some live uh, audiences to come here, sit here and talk to South Africa to say what their experiences were like and how are they enjoying the first session. I'm also going to have me a cup of tea, so I'm out. I'm out for a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. Oh, and a sandwich. Great stuff. Enjoy the break, Mr. Kota, and we'll talk to you guys a little bit later. How come we can't hear them from that side? Okay, Shanaz. Uh, just um, a moment to reflect on how the session started this morning. Uh, what was your experience like, and, and what was the energy like with the participants that's been online? I think it's been great um, for it's been the first time that I've um, been sitting in on these workshops. And what's been so funny is that I am not a maths person at all. Um, as I mentioned this morning, I, um, I tend to say I work with words and not numbers. So it's been an education for me as well. The last time I had to do something like this was many, many years ago. So I'm not going to lie. It's been it's quite interesting. Um, and I just love the the methods that um, Mr. Quarter applied to some of the um, equations. So it's been, um, uh, there was quite a bit of activity on our social feeds. Um, there's been quite a bit of, um, you know, encouragement given. 
um, some students were just getting they pick, you could you can see who those math students were and maybe like you can see who the students were like me who are more social science students so I think it was really good um, it was great to be able to support you guys with this initiative um, and I'm glad that you and I are here to take over so I can get back to my studies so um, yeah, no, thanks so much fantastic. for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, relieving me. I had to write an exam today, so I'm very appreciative for your time. And I know that you're also quite busy over the weekend. And But hey, Shanaz, did you like maths in school? I Were hated you... mathematics, I'm not going to lie. Like, I would try and find ways to get myself out of maths, to be honest. Um, so as I said, I'm more of a social science student, so I love the languages. I did three languages. I love things like history and um, bio. I hated physics for, and I did it for some odd reason. Those were the subjects I ended up taking, mathematics and physics. But I guess back then, like, you know, if you needed to do these um, maths and science to move forward. But I love the fact that these days you get more students going into the art subjects and the social sciences because there's just an array of, you know, career choices now that's available to people. So, um Yes, it's a good foundation. And I'm not saying don't do mathematics because you'll definitely need it. Even with the work that I do, I'm now involved in putting together reports that where you need to analyze data and numbers all the time. So um, I'm glad that I can still apply a lot of these lessons that I've learned way back in the day to the work that sure. I'm doing now. And Look. I'm completely out of the, the, the you know, the, the numbers game. But yeah, you still, you still need it. Look, I wasn't really a fan of mathematics, but, you know, hosting the session with Mr. Kota for the last two or three years online is really I've grown some sort of affinity to the subject. And I really wish I had a teacher like Mr. Kota during my time at school. You know, our maths teacher, was, he was a nightmare. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I remember like... um. I had a mathematics teacher that used to play the flute. So whenever like the class wasn't like paying attention to him or what he was trying to share with us or teach us that day, he would just randomly take his flute out and start playing music in class. It didn't really help because we just started making more noise. But then it was also a bit challenging. <laughs> you know, we were a bit of a rowdy class. But um, in some instances, um, yeah, maybe it helped. I don't know. But I'm glad that, um, you know, we can make these um, resources um, like um, the KWA Institute available to so many learners out there that's been struggling with the subject. I saw some comments coming in earlier about, you know, just how COVID affected a lot of the learners. And it basically took two years of studying um, and like, like really training themselves on how to apply these um, skills, you know, and I, I think this platform is a really, really good one. And I think it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be supported. And so that, you know, you can reach more students out there. There were comments that came through earlier where people asked like whether we're doing similar things around um, physical science as well. Like, you know, are we having physics classes? I know of um, I know of some learners that needs assistance with English tuition or Afrikaans tuition. And I think this is just, you know, one of those, um, you know, this is just one, uh, this is a springboard that we should nurture and to see how we can also incorporate other subject areas that's also that students do find problematic. I know sure. there were some questions coming through in terms of the break. I think the break is for 30 minutes. So I think the next session will start around about 11.30. So if anyone is still online and you want to take, um, you know, a comfort break or go have a bite to eat, you still have about 20 minutes to do so. So please do ignore like the break time on screen because obviously we started slightly later this morning because of our technical issues. But um, so we are extending this break to 11.30 now. So sure. um, yeah, please make most of, please do take the 20 minutes to go take a break and stretch your legs and eat something. No, sure, I'm just- I said, you wrote an exam this morning. Yes, I wrote a media studies uh, examination this morning. And it's been a very busy week, I might add. Um, there's been other papers that I had to write uh, in terms of communication, uh, my communication exam. So Alhamdulillah, with lots of the preparation, it was really a good uh, paper. And I really empathize with our participants because they are having pre-exam jitters for the June exam. And, uh, you know, I've been also preparing so we know you know, the amount of 
uh, energy that and, and preparation that that goes into these sessions. And just to uh, reflect on what you I were think, saying, that Hasidane, can you hear me? Yes, I can, loud and clear. So I'm just reflecting okay, on the, right. the need for physical um, or physics uh, tuition. We've been getting lots of these uh, requests that. Uh, and, you know, it's something that OCAF has to consider because, you know, we've been focused on this mass upgrade project since 2016. And the aim is to assist learners that are struggling. And I think we should, you know, maybe have a look at that, you know, and then look at the, the sciences. Maybe we can have an intervention around there. Because, like, you know, OCAF is a community-based organization. And we do a fair amount of skills development and outreach around sports, cricket, rugby, soccer, uh, athletics, the light goes on. So this is our focus in education. And I think definitely something that we have to really um, consider, you know, uh, that there is a demand for careers in STEM, science and mathematics. Uh, we need to produce more scientists, more engineers, mathematicians, and the like to solve some of our challenges. But I do feel at the same time, like there needs to be, I I, I always take it from a different perspective because I think I'm, I'm a, I would like to consider myself a social scientist. And I think there's a lot of other subjects that, you know, we, while we're applying the, uh, you know, while we're applying a lot of effort into like upskilling students around science and mathematics um you know there is also a need to kind of like um you know get people to kind of strengthen like other skills as well which they would need once they you know move into like the um you know a workspace as well like uh, we both in communications and media and like we've seen like it's very um you can actually see when people do have challenges of you know just communicating um, you know, those needs or like what they're trying to say. So I think it's so interesting to see like these, I mean, it is phenomenal. I think today we went up to like quite a, a well over 220 online um, participants, which is fantastic. And I believe there's over 200, um, you know, students in the hall at the Al-Ghazali College. So I think it's, um, you know, while this is like one way of, you know, getting kids to really enjoy mathematics, I think it's also the way it's being shared, it's being taught. And, um, you know, making, um, you know, and Mr. Korta as well, being able to share his skills and, you know, um, expertise, uh, you know, with such a broader audience. I think it's it's phenomenal work. Um, and maybe it just means that we need to start thinking about very creative ways to bring in other subject areas as well, which we can also share um, on a platform such as YouTube and Facebook to make it more accessible to other students as well. Yes, we need to gamify education. And we are using the YouTube platform and most of our um, participants, our grade 12 learners, they consume media using these platforms. Why can't we use these platforms to produce some sort of a program that will assist them in preparation for the exams? And you know, Shanaz, from us hosting this program over the last two years, we have lots of current participants tuning into the program. And then we're going to have a, even a bigger amount consuming or viewing the session in preparation for the examination post-event. So, you know, some of our thoughts and reflections on here, we hope that uh, this is of value to participants and educators that are tuned into the session. 100%. And I see um, Solisi has just posted a question around, do we, do you also cater for, uh, do you always cater other subjects as well? And we were just chatting about this. This is something that we're going to be exploring to try and see how we can incorporate sessions, you know, for other subject areas as well. So watch this space, like us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, follow our channel on YouTube. And, you know, as we um, update our subject areas that we would be presenting, um, you know, you'd be the first to know. So keep an eye out for any updates on our Oak of SA social media pages. And we're hoping to see how we can, how best we can roll this out in preparation for the June exams, as well as the final exams at the end of the year. So there we go. And have we spoke about, or had a mention of the competition briefly? I think, yeah, we, we touched on it briefly this morning, but maybe for those um, 
students that actually joined maybe a little bit late, don't you maybe want to run them through what this competition is all about? It's quite exciting. Okay, so in order to make things exciting, we decided to host a competition uh, for all participants that took part in our maths competition. So what is required is that in order for you to take part in this competition, you need to have registered online. So you need to log on to the OCAF's website. That's the address, www.ocafsa.org.za. You log on to the OCAF's website if you have not registered. And basically, this is a competition that is going to be taking place or it will open um, on January 2024. So if you have registered, you will receive email communication around this competition. The competition is open to grades 10, 11, and 12. And we will be awarding cash prizes to some of the top performance you need to do very well in your examination. And basically, the, the competition works as follows. You have to submit your June examination results as well as your December examination results. This is why the competition is opening um, on January 2024. This is when uh, grade 12 learners um, will receive the um, see if the results. Shanaz, are you still with us? So that was just some information regarding the competition. And also, please... Uh, yes, so Hatsunen, I'm... Go for it. I was saying, um, you know, your, I think it could be your internet that's a bit choppy. So um, I think, I don't know if you maybe just want to run through that uh, screen again, uh, just sharing the information about the competition. Okay, there we go. So that's the screen on the competition. So all participants, you are currently, we're currently hosting the grade 12 workshop, but this competition is open to grades 10, 11, uh, and 12. Last week, we hosted a grade 11 workshop. Next week, we will host a grade 10. So if you are a participant, kindly ensure that you have registered. We will be awarding cash prizes for positions 1, 2, and 3, as well as the most improved um, uh most improved learner. Uh, all that you need to do, you need to have been um, registered via online. So if you have not, log on to the OCAF essays website, okafessay.org.za, and the competition will open uh, on January 2024. We will be emailing um, all registered participants with the link to upload their results. That is one of the requirements of the competition. You will upload your June and your December results. Hassanan, I think maybe um, to provide some inspiration for a lot of the learners that's still online, um, you know, tell us about um, uh, the one student that's now studying actuarial science, if I'm not mistaken. I said under yes. prediction, um, and he's someone that's um, he went through this training program. Um, so maybe um, tell us a little bit more about that student. And I believe you have a video that you can also share um, about sure. him. Sure. So I'll play a short video. And this is from Rory Sang. He was a participant in our grade 12 workshop last year. He did quite well. He took part in the competition and he scored 100% for maths. Shanaz, imagine that. 100%. Uh, in mathematics, he's currently studying actuarial science. That's incredible. At university. Yeah, it's it's in, inspiring. And this is why we need to share this to all of the participants because his message is quite inspiring. So let's just play that insert quickly. Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving and prosperous society. However, the South African educational system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Educational Waka Fund to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 40,000 matriculants. At the schools participating in our program, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, 
it was a life-changing experience. So I've never reached that kind of height before. It was quite a milestone and I believe that Alcohav has been quite instrumental in me reaching that milestone. Um, and I also liked the spirit. Mr. Kota made sure that we're always engaged with the content. So for me, that's what made it a very um, positive. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as read, educating our community is an act of faith. With your help, we can transform many more lives. So that's Rory Sang. We will play another insert during the course of the of the session today. We do have another video insert, but that's it, Shanaz. I mean, Rory Sang, he was a participant in our workshop. He scored quite well and he's doing quite well uh, in terms of his study. So if you perform well in um, your examination, there's always assistance in the form of a bursary. I think it's it's wonderful that you know these opportunities are being made available to students, um, and you can actually see you know um, with Rudi Sang how he grew through you know the support of this program and now being able to complete you know his studies in actuarial science as well. It's it's one of those really positive impact stories that I think we should be you should, we should be nurturing and we should be making more noise about. So um, well done to you and the team um, at OCOF and. Mr. Korta for, you know, making these opportunities available to so many students out there. No, fantastic. And and this intervention is very important because... I see of... there's a question that's come in. Um... Okay, there we go. So let me... I see there's a question that's come in with regards to the live um, being available to watch after this um, is completed. Okay, so this session... Um, is hosted on OCAF SA's YouTube channel. So what you need to do is you need to log on to OCAF SA's website, okafsa.org.za. We have links to all of our social media on there. So there we go. So that's the social media for YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you search for OCAF South Africa, it will bring up that YouTube channel. You can subscribe and you can like. And on that channel, we will always keep uh, the videos of the session. So if you drop off due to load shedding or you're having some sort of an issue, or you've got another um, tuition class, you've got something else to do, you go onto that YouTube platform and you can refer back to it. And you can even use the same video um, as part of your revision going forward. See, there is an inbox. Okay, I've got your message there. Okay, I, I, I think I know what the issue is. I think um, while you're speaking, uh, I will just sort out my internet connection. Great stuff. Okay, so while you're speaking, I'll just sort out my internet. I know it's something very I think small. also, I'm not too sure if Mr. Korta is... Um, so we're back while we're waiting for Hassanain to reconnect and just sort out his internet connection. Um, I am just going to maybe run through some of the um, other comments that's come through. Um, so, Mohammed Yasin Munshi, I see your question about... Will we be able to watch this live at a later time um, after it's done? As Hassanain said, it will be available on the OCAF page. It will also be available on the YouTube channel. And you can also go back to refer to any of the older programs that we've run um, in your preparation for the exams. And while you are busy, um, you know, busy with your revisions, um, those programs do live online on our YouTube channel. If you visit the page on our OCAF um, website as well, um, a lot of the um, older links are also available there. So we've made this available. Um, it would live as soon as this is broadcast is done. It will live online and you can basically go back into the video, um, you know, and to watch it, um, you know, as you prepare for your exams. I hope that's helpful. Hassanay has just projected, um, you know, where you'll be able to get hold of us. We're on Facebook, on the OCOF South Africa um, Facebook page. 
be on Instagram and our handle is at Okaf SA. Um, that's the same handle you use for Twitter. And then we also have a YouTube channel, as I mentioned, it's Okaf South Africa. And if you want to, please, we encourage you to like our Facebook pages, Instagram pages, Twitter accounts, and then um, the YouTube channel as well. Subscribe to our channel. Um, and if you are uh, wanting to post what you're currently doing behind the scenes as you're working through some of these equations with Mr. Korta, then please use those hashtags. Those hashtags is hashtag OCOVSA and hashtag OCOVSA maths, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. These are on your screen right now. So um, please do tag us in your photographs if you're doing any videos on TikTok. If you are a TikTok star and you want to show your people what you're doing around mathematics, then please do tag us as well. Um, and you, you'll be able to see some of your materials that will cross post to our social media pages. So, um, uh, Pasanen, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Um, I'm sure my internet connection is a little bit better now um, using a cable connection. So that would sort out some of uh, the earlier shortcomings that I did have. Yes, so uh, you're still a little bit patchy, but I'm sure it will probably ease its way out. It will sort itself out. It's very cold here in Cape Town. Uh Possibly about like nine degrees <laughs> this morning. You would agree. You're also beaming from Cape Town. And I'm sure the internet just has to warm up uh, to this very important mathematics session. 100%. Like I'm, I'm fortunate to be like sitting inside and like I've got so many different things on. Um, although we will be hit with load shedding um, in the next couple of minutes so <laughs> as we prepare for that. But, um, yeah, um, I just hope that everyone is staying warm, staying safe. And, you know, it's probably better to be <laughs> a bit yeah, staying inside these days. Um, Mr. Isaac said this morning, Johannesburg is also bitingly cold. Um, so hopefully um, Mr. Korta and his energy will be able to warm everyone else up this morning as you work through the second session of this maths paper preparation. No, fantastic. Um, we need, we actually need to host, you know, you took the morning session. And I'm here, uh, here to relieve you <laughs> and to carry on because Mr. Kota and his energy, it's very hard to match, you know, um, is like a live wire, he's got high energy, and this is what's required to... Um, uh, Which I totally appreciate to because I think I'm... Yeah, I, I totally needed that energy because I'm heading into um, some studying as well. Um, I'm, I'm finishing off a thesis, so I need to sit and actually do some chapter writing today. So I'm glad I was able to actually um, join you guys for the morning session. I've, I've basically take, I've taken in as much of that energy <laughs> as possible as I head off to, um, you know, do my um, studies as well. So... Um, I'm going to log off now. We, I'm wishing you guys everything on the best for the rest of the day. And um, hopefully I'll get to see you guys and chat to you guys soon. Thank you so much, uh, Shanaz. Good luck with your with your paper. And, you know, uh, in conclusion is that, look, I've been preparing for examination and you are involved with some um, academic studies also. So, you know, we to some degree, we do empathize with some of the, the learners and the participants because they are also preparing for the exams and they have to swat and eat the books. And here we are in the same position, you know, as part of our career development. And some of these young lives, they've got their whole future ahead of themselves, you know. So, Shanaz, all the best to your uh, studies. 100%. And I appreciate the energy... And um, the manner in which you hosted the session uh, may be a good one for you. And rest up um, uh, so you can have enough energy to finish Thank your Thank you so your much. And all the best, everyone. In... Okay. Thanks so much. All the best. Bye. Walaikum salam. Walaikum salam. So that was Shanaz Ibrahim. We work very closely with Shanaz Ibrahim. She's involved in uh, the communications field and lots of our projects she is involved with. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed the session with her. So we're just getting ready um, to complete uh, our brief break. And then we'll have Mr. Kota on board.
um, for the uh, us resuming with session number two of the grade 12 uh, workshop. So there we go. If you just joined us, that uh, we are currently hosting the grade 12 maths workshop, maths paper one. We'll go all the way to three o'clock. Yes, indeed, it is that time to start.
So welcome back. Uh, we are about to resume now. We'll get Mr. Kota on. <coughs> My name is Hassanin Abdullah. I'm with OCAF. Um, I normally host these sessions with Mohamed Kota, uh, but I've been away. I've had an examination paper to write. So we're going to reload the session now and resume after the break. I hope that you are energized, hydrated, and, and the like. And we're going to play this little insert we're going to play this little insert to cue Mr. Kota and his amazing energy. So let's get... 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have to go for ready to start. 2, 1, here. Booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard. Here we go, Mr. Kota. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, everybody. There we go. Here we go, here we go. We're back into session. Hassanain, welcome back. Uh, good to have you on show again as my co pilot. And uh, yeah, we're in session again. Uh, I hope my the picture and sound is quite clear coming through to you on that side. Crystal clear, Mr. Kota. You've got the runway to take it away. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Boys and girls, we've had some fantastic positive feedback during the break. Let's take this one. We're still continuing because of our slight delays on day one when we started off. Let's start off with some commonly asked questions with regard to infinity. In fact, let's take this one down. Take this one down. If Sn equals 4n squared plus 4n. Find the value of the eighth term. Have you guys seen this one before? They give you an Sn formula and you need to find the value of the eighth term. This one is worth four marks. So that's the question. Let's see. Here's your answer. So while you guys are taking this one down and taking it through, uh, Hassanain, you can maybe just uh, fill us in on uh, what's happening. Some of you say that your screen is not clear or you might not be able to hear. You will have to go out and come back in. It's probably your own internet connection. We are moving at super high speed internet. That's correct. That's are. correct, Mr. Dakota. If any of the learners are experiencing any blurry screens or any issues, load, load shading, whatever, these videos are hosted on OCAV's YouTube. We're not going to take it, remove it. You can refer back to the video. Could potentially mean your screen is unclear because your internet connection um, could be running at a, a very slow rate. All right. Here we the go. Here we go. Is, it is clear. Here we go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go. We're finding the value of the eighth term. They give you SN. Now, remember, remember, let's say we had five people here. One, two, three, four, five. If I told you that the sum of five people's ages is a hundred, the sum of five people's ages is a hundred, then I told you that the sum of four people's ages is equal to 80. How old is the fifth person? You take 100 minus 80, which is equal to 20. So to get T5, you took S5 minus S4. Are you all with me? Are you all with me? To get T5, you took the sum of 5, which was 100, minus the sum of 4, which was 80. And 100 minus 80 gave you 20. So obviously, that is just to show you how we do it. That is just to show you how we do it. So now to get the eighth term, what do you think we're going to do? To get T8. To get T8. To get T8. We're going to take S8 minus S7. Yes or no? Are you all with me? Good. Onliners, are you back online? Are you back online? Are you guys following? Let's go, let's go, let's go. So T8, 
is equal to what is S8? Is 4 into 8 squared plus 4 into 8 minus S7 is 4 into 7 squared plus 4 into 7. This is equal to 4 into 8 squared is 64 plus 32 minus 4 into 7 squared is 49 plus 28. That is equal to 4 times 64 plus 32. That should give us about 288. Minus 4 times 49 plus 28 is 224. Just double check it with me. 4 times 64, 256 plus 32 is 288. 4 times 49 is 196 plus 28, 224. That means T8 is equal to 64. And there we go, we are done. That's your final answer, T8 is equal to 64. How did we get it? We took S8 minus S7, right guys? Good. Onliners, are you following? We need to pick up the pace. We need to pick up the pace. Tertius, well done, well done, well done, well done. Rabia, Tertius. Tandeka, Sadia Munaf, Ntando. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm looking at all your comments here on the side. Well done. Take it down, take it down. While you guys are taking it down, let's take the let's do some infinity questions. Right. Let's do some infinity. Very popular question. The next one. For which value? Take this one down. For which value? Of values of X will the series one minus X over two plus one minus X over two squared plus one minus X over two cube plus dot 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 converge. So the first question, question number one is converge take down this question those of you who took down the memo for the first one start with this one question number one converge very popular question and number two find the sum to infinity if x equals three let's go the first question is worth three marks the second word question is worth three marks total marks six Learn these. These are exam templates for sequences and series. Now, we've been informed. I was chatting why you guys are doing this one. We, I have been informed during the break. Certain schools didn't start with finance. Certain schools are only going to do finance in term three. But remember, that this is a national outreach program. So most of the Johannesburg schools have done finance already and they will be writing on finance. Right? A lot of the KZN schools have done finance. A lot of the IEB schools have done finance. So guys, what we're going to do when we're done with all of this, I'm going to do finance and I'm going to do it with everybody. So basically, even if you're doing it for the first time, you will be light years ahead of your school. You'll pay attention. You'll learn it. You'll master it. You'll be prepared for your final exam. So remember, this is not only for a certain group of people. This workshop, because we've got thousands of learners from across, across the country, we've got to follow the ATP for national, not only for provincial or for district. Okay. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Answer to question number one. This is the way you do it. You need to pay attention. I'm not going to, I cannot be repeating what I'm doing. Otherwise, we won't have time. What you need to do is then take the link, the YouTube link on Monday or tomorrow when it's uploaded and you keep on repeating and watching it over and over until you understand it. But if you understand it the first time while we're doing it now, thumbs up and good luck to you. Okay, so let's go. So to answer this one for conversion, what did I say for it to converge? R must be less than one but greater than minus one. Like I told you people, I'm not doing rough calculations. 
I am not doing rough calculations. You will answer this one exactly the way we answer it on screen. So we need to get R. What is R? R is equal to term 2 divided by term 1. So it's 1 minus x over 2 all squared divided by 1 minus x over 2. Term 2 over term 1. And obviously, sorry, not squared. Yeah. So that divided by that will give me what? 1 minus x over 2. That's R. R is 1 minus x over 2. Are you all following? Now we take this R and we put it in there. So 1 minus x over 2. Less than 1, greater than minus 1. Let's solve for x. Multiply both sides by 2. We want to get rid of 2, so we multiply by 2. We multiply by 2. Minus 2, less than 1 minus x. Less than 1 times 2 is 2. We're solving for x. Minus x, less than. Take the 1 over on both sides. Minus 2, minus 1, minus 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. Divide by negative. X greater than 1 but less than minus 3. Yes or no? Right. So what we're doing? X less than 2 but greater than negative 2. Let's just do this again. We take the 1 over on the other side. Becomes minus 1. Minus 2 minus 1 minus 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. Oh, we, that's minus. So x is greater than minus 1 but less than. Greater than minus 1 but less than minus 3. So now you write for all other values less than 3. Because we forgot to divide it by negative. There we go. That's our final answer. Because we're dividing by negative. That sign changes. That sign changes. Now you write for all other value or values of x, the series diverges. For these values of x, it will converge. For all other value or values of x, the series diverges. And that's how you will answer this in your final exam. Right, guys, I hope you took this one down. That's the way you will answer it. Let's do the second one. Find the sum to infinity if x equals 3. Let's see if you guys can do that one on your own. Give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a go. How are we doing on that side? That's the name. Earth calling to, or space calling to, as a name. So what did you have during your break time there, Mr. Kota? It looks like your energy is matched. It's maximized. It's energized. It's gamified. We always on fire here. We always on fire. Inshallah, you'll see that this energy will pull us through right through until the end of the day and first thing tomorrow morning too. It's math. So, we so eat, sleep, and dream math. So the question is, Mr. Kota, have uh, you been enjoying your um, behaving yourself this morning? I tried. Honestly, <laughs> I tried. I didn't need to get wrapped on the knuckles. Uh, I, was, I was good. I okay, went you're running a mock. I was reviewing the earlier session. Uh, yeah, I'll have a look there and see if you haven't been running a little riot here, you know. No, 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 no. We tried it. I think Shanaz would have, uh, I think the, the pacemakers would have stopped. <laughs> no, no, definitely. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. Find the sum to infinity. Now it's convergent. It's convergent. So S to infinity equals for convergent A over 1 minus R. Yes or no? Right. So what is A? 1 minus X over 2 divided by 1 minus. What's your common ratio? Also 1 minus X all over 2. Let's go. If X is equal to 3. So all we do now we substitute 3. 1 minus 3 all over 2. Divided by 1 minus 1 minus 3 over 2. I'm moving over to the side. 1 minus 3 is minus 2 over 2. Divided by 1 minus minus 2 over 2. That gives me minus 2 over 2. Divided by 1 plus 2 over 2 is 1. 
And 2 over 2 is also 1 here on the top. So I'm just going to take this out and put a 1 there. And what is our final answer? Minus a half. A half. A half. A half. Minus a half. A half. A half. Minus a half. Minus a half. And here we go. That's our final answer. The sum to infinity for this conversion series, as you add more and more terms, will approach negative a half. Quite man. You're looking sharp on the camera there, Mr. Kota. I love your hoodie today. You're styling. I could show. Lucky I didn't wear my You go boss. <laughs> okay. Who's the boss? Right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop you with the last one, right? A higher order question. I'm dropping you with a higher order question. I'm starting again my nonsense, man. I know they're telling me you are starting your, uh, let's not say, SH1. Your muscular. Yeah, your my muscular. Convert 3,27 recurring to a common fraction. This is the last one we're doing to a common fraction using series formula to a common fraction using series formula for six months Eish, they are crying on this side already there's a recurring decimal we want to convert it to a common fraction. now believe you me if i tell you that the level of today's workshop is only level one and two so far I could see when I gave you that first one of the ratio 3 over 2, you all died. So if I had to give you only level 3 and 4 questions today, I think 99% of you would have logged off. You would have been crying. And those of you who attended, who attended my NBT workshop before, like I said, do not compare this to NBT. NBT was maths on steroids. I need to show you the normal questions, take them a little bit higher to what you ought to see in your June exam to get you familiar so you can start working with your values. If I only stuck on higher order, like I did that first one, where the products are in the ratio 3 over 2, and if I had to give you every question like that today, you would have been dead. You would all say, we are leaving school, we are dropping maths. We're going to work at McDee's. Mr. Kota, I sent you a message. All right, all right, all right, all right. Give me a second. Channel. I'll check, I'll check, I'll check, I'll check. Let's see. Let's go back to stream yet. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now. How do we answer this? Let me see. Show of hands. How many of you got this one? Okay, I know there's some KWA students here. They know how to do it. KWA students, I know, you know. You just looked at it and you said, right, you know what the answer is. Right. So let's go in our answer. Shh. Pay attention. So this is three. There's a three plus. Pay attention. That is 27. Two dots means two zeros. So it's 27 over 100. Yes or no? And the next 27 will be four zeros. So 27 over one, two, three, four zeros. And the next 27 will be over six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And it will continue like that to infinity. So this after the decimal is a geometric infinite series. So this is 3 plus A is 27 over 100. My common ratio is that over that, which is 1 over 100. And R is less than 1, but greater than minus 1. So it must be convergent. And you can answer it like this in your exam. I'm giving you a template. So this is 3 plus s to infinity s to infinity is a over one minus r so this is three plus what's a what's a 
27 over 100 divided by 1 minus 1 over 100. That is equal to 3 plus this on your calculator will give me 3 over 11. My answer is 3 and 3 11. That's how we converted that recurring fraction to a decimal or that decimal recurring fraction to a common fraction using series formula. So guys, just a quick recap. We started a little bit late today, so we did some higher order algebra. I saw some of you, I, I had to assess very quickly that some of your grade 11 algebra was a bit shaky. So we had to spend more time on your grade 11 to show you how to do inequalities. So we did higher order algebra. I then did inequalities for you. Then we did sequences and series. And we're now coming to the end of sequences and series. Hopefully with these tools, you can start working through your past papers and getting a better understanding of it. Let's start now with finance. We're going to push with finance from now till the next break. We started at quarter two or at 25 to 12, 25 to 1. 1 o'clock would be your next break. So I'm going to finish the entire grade 12 finance for you today. So even if you haven't done it today, by the end of today, you are ready to write your final exams for finance. Deal? Deal. Now it's time for tricks. Now it's time for tricks. Right. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're starting with finance, guys. Let's see, online, hit us up. How many of you have done finance in school? Hit us up in the comment section. Pick up your hands. <laughs> Lift your paws. How's this coming? Damn. Ah. <laughs> awesome. you, got my, you got my head spinning around, Mr. Couture. There we go. What's no, Mr. Awesome? Couture. How did I spin my world around? Okay, no. Spin my world around. Okay. Okay, so okay. Not yet, in. not yet, not yet. Some of you have done it. Let's see who's done it last year. No, I'm talking about future value, present value, annuity. We are talking Japanese. Right, let's start. So if you haven't done it, if you haven't done it, let's do it. If you haven't done it, you just started. Itumaleng says, they just started. Right, let's go. Poppy said they've done it. Dua said not yet. Rabia, not yet. Okay, let's go. I'm not going to go through everyone. Let's start. Shh, pay attention. Here's the first. Now, this is a grade 11 question that includes logs in it for finance. The high ball. We are doing finance. We are not yet on grade 12. Watch this. How long? How long? will it take take this one down for a motor vehicle mv when i say mv is abbreviation abbreviation for motor vehicle to depreciate to 25 percent of its original value based on The reducing balance method at 15% per annum and it's worth 5 marks. Learn this. This is your opening question for grade 12. I've seen this in many past papers before. Shh. This is still last year's depreciation. It's grade 11 depreciation. Pay attention, let's do it together. Whenever they say how long, they're looking for time. So they're looking for N. Pay attention. Onliners, take this one. Take this one down. So here goes, let's do the answer. 
a equals b into 1 minus i to the power n. Reducing balance method. That's your formula. Shh. Pay attention. Put your pens down. So a equals b into 1 minus at 15% per annum 0, 0,15 to the power n. We're looking for n. Shh. Pay attention. They say to 25% of its original value. So if the original value is P, then A will be 0, 0,25 P. 25% of its original value. 1 minus 0, 0,15 is 0, 0,85 to the power N. We're looking for N. Yes or no? We are replacing A, we are replacing A with 0, 0,25 P. So if they told us 50% of original value, 0, 0,5 P. Are you all with me? Yes, no? Because it's reducing to 25% of its original value. So divide by P, divide by P. P and P is gone so 0, 0,25 is equal to 0, 0,85 to the power n what system do we use to solve for n logs well done that's why it becomes a grade 12 question so let's do it on the side let's do it on the side i'm moving up because i don't have enough space i'm going to say log 0, 0,25 is equal to log 0, 0,85 to the power n. So let's write it out again. Log 0, 0,25 is equal to log 0, 0,85 to the power n. Bring the n in front. n log 0, 0,85 is equal to log 0, 0,25 n equals log 0, 0,25 divided by log 0, 0,85 n equals check on your calculator 8,53 8,53 years and that's your final answer you got 5 marks for it Learn. I beg you guys, learn. You'll come across it in almost every past paper. Now I'm still doing another grade 11 concept that's asked in grade 12, where we're converting nominal to effective interest rates. Pay attention. But in grade 12, they say nominal compounded monthly to effective compounded quarterly. It's last year's work asked this year. Pay attention. Remember, this is full exam, June exam prep. So I've got to do questions that you would possibly see. Onliners, are we okay? Rabi, are you guys following? Poppy Pizza. <laughs> Italiano. <laughs> Litarian. Let's go. I'm clearing this. Let's do the next one. We are still not on grade 12 work. Yes, this is a grade 11 question asked in grade 12. But the core grade 12 work is future value and present value annuities. Shh, pay attention. Question number two. Convert. 11,3% per annum. Compounded monthly to an effective interest rate. Compounded quarterly for five months. Still grade 11 asking grade 12.
Tala met Mr. Kauter. Tala met. Easy, They are all focused. Yebo, yes. All focused. I want you guys to imagine that we're sitting in your June exam right now. And these are the questions that are popping up, and this is how we Tala it together. This is one big study group with the whole country. As I mean, we could have never done this pre COVID. I just, uh, I don't know. I'd hate to say, no, no, we can never say we can thank COVID. But you know what? We can thank the days that we've experienced to take us to a point where we can actually talk to millions of learners at the same time. Amandla! Now where to? That's the name, my man. You know what? We never, we never sang the national anthem, Woloche Di, in the house. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Mr. Kauter, we're going to do Tomorrow we're starting off and we're going to sing. And guess what? I'm leading the chorus tomorrow. Sure, sure, Lord. Is that the national anthem? You no, 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 that, no. No, that, that's a war cry, Mr. Kauter. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah. Man. Sure, sure, Lord, is our war cry. Yeah. I thought you confused the war cry with the national anthem. <laughs> All right, let's go. One. Plus I effective compounded quarterly is equal to one plus I nominal over your compoundings to the power your compounding. Did you guys see this formula before? Yes. Yes. One plus I effective compounded quarterly is one plus I nominal over your compoundings to the power of your nominal compounding let's do it together let's dollar together take out your calculators get ready one plus i effective over four is equal or to the power of four is equal to one plus eleven comma three is 0, 0,113 compounded monthly over 12 to the power 12. Now we want to get, now put down your pens, this is the algebra. Now algebra takes over. So if it was square, we'd find the square root. If it was cube, we find the cube root. It's to the power 4. What root do I find? Fourth root. It looks as if we have lost connection there with Mr. Kota. So we'll uh, try and find out what the problem is there with him. I'm sure it must be the generator kicking in. So just be on standby and we will connect with you again. This is the grade 12 uh, maths workshop, maths paper one. And we will be resuming with you shortly. So we'll just try and get to the bottom of the issue. What seems to be the issue why we have lost contact with Mr. Cota's um, uh, white screen there. Just be on standby. No need to panic. I think we're back in. Let's go here. Present. Share screen. Share screen. Welcome back. Thank you. A little bit of downtime. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I mean, we're back, we're back, we're back. We had a little bit of downtime here. Take it away. Let's go. All right, guys, we're back in. So one plus I over four. Let's go again. Let's go again. One plus I effective over four is equal to the fourth root. The fourth root of now, guys. 
Let's do this on our calculators. 1 plus fraction 0, 0,113 over 12 equals. Now it's a long number, guys. In fact, you know what you do, guys? Shh, pay attention. Don't simplify. Leave this 1 plus 0, 0,113 over 12 to the power 12. So 1 plus i e over 4 will equal to 12 divided by 4 would be 1 plus 0, 0,113 over 12 to the power 12 divided by 4 is 3. Yes or no? Now we want to get rid of this plus 1. The plus 1 will come on the other side as minus 1. So that 1 is gone. Then we want to get rid of the 4. What's the opposite of division? Good. So we multiply this side by 4. We multiply that side by 4. So IE is equal to 4 into 1 plus 0, 0,113 over 12 to the power 3 minus 1. Here comes our final answer. I E equals. Here's our answer, guys. So let's do it on our calculators. Go to your scientific. 4, open brackets, open brackets, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0,113 over 12. Close brackets to the power 3, minus 1, close brackets. Don't round off anything while you're doing your calculations because you want your answer to be on point. 0, 11406 0, 11407 blah 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 so that's 11 comma 41 11 comma 41 percent per annum and there we go 11 comma 41 percent per annum online earn. How are we doing? Let's check your comment. Yes. It's not 0, 0,41, 11, 41, Wendell. Right. Let's go. 11. Yes, Rabia. Absolutely. 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 That's correct, Wendell. There we go. Let's see some of the pictures from all the different schools. That would be I want, good. I want to see a view of your classroom, ah, there, Mr. Kota. You know what Uriel said, Gobeni. You could Sister see Sister is the national anthem. <laughs> no ways. No ways. No ways. Sister Batina. Can, can we get a oh, shot of your? Can okay, we get I, a shot I'm of your audience? It's problem that one. Can we have a view of your classroom there, Mr. Kota? I don't know how would I do that. I don't even know. I, how about this? How about I send you pictures uh, on your WhatsApp and maybe you can flight it on the screen. This is what sure. our classes looks like. Yeah. That's what our class looks like. I'm sending it to you now as we chat. There we go, there we go, there we go. It's all gone to you on your WhatsApp. Okay, guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Right, moving along. Right, now, put your pens down. Now we're starting with a brand new topic. We're starting with finance for this year. Right? So we're starting with finance. Pay attention. Now, finance for this year, we are dealing with what we call annuities. Annuities deals with monthly repayments. And monthly repayment, you'll either repay a loan or you will have a savings. So whether you open up a bank account you either and you borrow money from them, that's a loan, you're paying monthly. Or you open up a savings account and you are repaying monthly. That's what is an annuity. Monthly repayments over a period of time. 
Shh, pay attention. I'm teaching you a brand new topic. If you listen to me, you pay attention, you stick to my train of thought, you'll get full marks in the exam. Shh. Another word for savings is what we call in grade 12 a sinking fund. Why sinking? Because you're sinking towards an amount. If you want to save 50,000 in 20 years time, you start putting in money today and you sink in towards an amount. So it's called uh, another word for savings. It's called a sinking fund. Right. So we have future value and we have present value. Two new formulas that you need to memorize. Future value X into 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 all over i. This is like a series of payments. a into r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Geometric series of payments. And we use the future value for savings or for sinking funds. And we use the present value, x equal 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n all over i. And that we use for loans. Whenever you borrow money or you repay, we use that for loans. So we use PV for loans. We use FV for savings. X is your monthly repayment. This FV or PV is your lump sum, your big amount. X is your monthly repayment or installment. I is your interest rate and your number of years. I is your interest rate. So take these two formulas down. Two new formulas for you, for annuities. We deal with future value. We deal with what we call future value. And that is what we call FV. And we have what we call present value, which is PV. Future value we use for savings. Present value we use for loans. So let's make up an acronym to remember this. Shh. So if you want to remember this in the exam, which one to use where? Just watch this. FSPL. Flippant Stupid People. Flippant, stupid people. Future value for savings, present value for loans. Okay. So if you don't know which one goes where, just think flippant, stupid people, right? FSPL. Mr. K said FSPL. You, we're going to be using this FSPL throughout. Onlineers, I hope you are listening. I hope you are paying attention. This is what we call annuities. Now I'm going to give you the overview of the, all the types of questions you will be asked. Seven types of questions. We're going to do one of each. And then we're done with the topic for the year. And that will take us right through until our next break. So if you pay attention with me now, if you Tandeka, you still can't see clearly. It's your internet connection. Go out, come back in, or go sit at a uh, Starbucks or Vida Cafe. They got free Wi-Fi. Take this down, guys. Are we okay? Can I clear the frame? May I clear the frame? Onlineers, talk to me. Mr. Kota sent you a WhatsApp. Let's check. You send me a WhatsApp. A WhatsApp or a private message? No, no, a WhatsApp. A WhatsApp. Let me see. Did I get it? No, I haven't got it. Didn't come through. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Right. Now pay attention. Put down your pens. Even onlineers. Put your pens down. Right. Here's your overview for the whole of finance for the year. This is grade 12. Let's put there. Grade 12 finance. Don't write. Don't write. Put your pens down. The first thing you're going to get questioned on is on future value and present value. 
The next topic you're going to get question on is what they call the balance outstanding. Meaning that say you take out a loan for 20 years and you pay up 15 years. Calculate the balance outstanding. So that's the second type. The third type of question you're going to get question on is the trade in of an asset. So you buy a car today, you want to trade it in in five years time. You want to calculate what's the difference that you have to pay in. So you're going to see. So that's question number one, type number two, type number three. The fourth one, immediate payment. Where you take out a loan and you, f you make your first payment immediately. The day you make the loan is the day you make your first repayment. It's calculated differently. We then have... So this is an early payment. Immediate means you pay early. Then you've got deferred payment. What do you think deferred? If immediate means you paid early, what do you think deferred means? Ah, you pay late. And then we have what we call the final payment. On a loan. So how many topics? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to do six concepts today. You master the six concepts, you can must, you've mastered the whole of finance. So what I've done for you is I've summarized the entire topic for you. This is all you need to know about finance. There's it on your screen. So by the time your teachers start with you in school, you open up your K-Way OCAF notes, you look at it and you smile. You'll know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> So it's up to you to pay attention today. You can have the screen on at your home or at your school. You can be playing around, fiddling with your toes, worried about what you're going to be doing tonight and not learning. Or you can be really paying attention and mastering your grade 12 content with K-Way and OCAF. Don't fear, Mr. K is here. And like you said, me and Asanayim, we got you. We got your back. We're here to take you right through to the final. The next program like this will take place before prelim. Only higher order question. And then finals. Only higher order. By then, you are 95, 96, 97 in Akhil Man. You will be immortal by then. I'm immortal in mathematics. You will be like legend. Rory Sang. Like Rory right? Sang. Bruh, how can you fight with a person who gets 100%? <laughs> Choose your battles wisely. So. Choose your battles wisely. Alison, ain't I miss you, my bro. <laughs> Don't worry, yeah. I'm here, man. Don't be you insecure. Got my back. Right, you guys took this down. Can we get fired up? How much time do we have? Let's see. Whoa, we only got 35 minutes. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Right, FV, right, future, let's take this one, right. You need to save, okay, let's not do future value, let's do a present value one. So let's say you take out a loan. So I'm going to speed up the process. You want a house and your house is 900,000 rand. And the interest rate the interest rate is 8,2% per annum, compounded monthly. And you take out the loan for a period of 30 years. That's what the banks allow you. Question number one. Calculate your monthly installment or your repayment on the loan. Question number two, I'm introducing the second topic. You repay 19 years of your 30-year loan. Calculate the balance outstanding for the remaining period. So now we're doing two concepts in one from our mind map. I'm doing present value and balance outstanding in one. Right, let's do question number one. Guys, I don't have much time. We've got 35 minutes. 
We won't complete it. We'll have to go a little bit over time, guys. Uh, due to all our challenges that we had today, I might even carry over some of the work from today into tomorrow morning. We might. Because we've lost about an hour. An hour in maths is one whole topic. Right, so let's go. Now listen to me, guys. Put down your pens. The first question is worth five marks. Actually, not three marks. And the next one is worth four marks. Total marks, seven. Right, this is paper one. Paper one, finance, grade 12. Right, it's a loan. FSPL, flippant stupid people. Is it present value or future value? Present value. F present value for loans. So it's PV is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. How much did we take out? 900,000. So your loan amount goes there. 900,000. We're solving for X into 1 minus 1 plus I, 8,2, 0, 0,082. You convert it to a decimal over 12 monthly to the power minus 12 times 30 years all over i 0, 0,082 over 12 here we get our answer in one step let me show you what to do take out your calculators onlineers are you following Rabia says, can we not go on for another hour today? I'd love to. If you guys want to, I'll go on for another hour till 4 o'clock. I got no problem. Or we can carry on another hour tomorrow. Up to you. Why don't so, we have a sleepover? Let's we have, have a sleepover. sleepover. That's what we said. Let's have a sleepover. Let's do it till 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock tonight. Are you gay? A pajama right. party. Pajama party. Right, so x is equal to, we start at our denominator. We want to make x the subject. So start there, multiply it by the big number, and press equals, and then divide it by everything else. So let's go to our calculators. Fraction 0, 0,082 over 12. Go to the side, multiply it by 900,000. 6150 on your calculator. 6150. Right, don't touch anything. Now say divided by open brackets. 1 minus open brackets. 1 plus fraction. 0, 0,082 over 12. Close brackets to the power. Minus 12 times 30 in the power. Close brackets equals 6,729 rand 79 cents per month. That is your repayment on your loan, on your 30 year loan, on a 900,000 rand house. And this is a real life scenario, guys. Yeah, boy, if you go to your local bank or financial institution and you want to buy a 900,000 rand house, this is our interest rate at the moment. And that's what you would be paying about 6,700. But how much would your house end up costing you? This is per month, times 12, times 30 years. You will repay them 2.4 million over 30 years. Why? What will you be repaying? Interest. Yes or no? Good. Onlineers, are you following me? Stick with my train of thought. Stick with my train of thought. I promise you, you will master this topic. Okay, okay, okay. Let's calculate the balance outstanding. Question number two. Now I'm going to show you a totally different way to the way your teachers would show you at school. I'm showing you a shortcut, a hack. You can do it in one step. Right, let's go. So how much were we repaying? I'm just putting the amount here. 
6729,79. Right. This is how we now do the balance outstanding on a loan. We into the second concept. Pay attention. We answering question number two now. Watch here. This is the way you do it. Or this is the way I want you to do it. Watch. We're going to say PV. That's your balance outstanding. X, we found out, into 1 minus 1 plus I minus N. I'm leaving that open all over I. To get the N for balance outstanding, listen to me. Listen to me. To get the N for balance outstanding. How many years did we pay up? 19 years, am I right? So all you do now, I'm showing you a little trick. All you do to get your N value here, you take your full term, your full term minus your paid up term. So your full term was 30 years compounded monthly. Minus your paid up term was 19 years compounded monthly. Now that's going to give me my N. So let's work it out now. 30 times 12 minus 19 times 12. 132. Because you have got 132 outstanding payments. Are you all following me? So now we substitute. Watch. Here's your answer in one step. PV equals X. 6729,79 into 1 minus 1 plus I. What was your interest rate? 0, 0,082. Over 12 to the power minus 132. All over I. 0, 0,082 over 12. Boom. Here's your balance outstanding. Let's go to our calculators. 6729,79. Open brackets. 1 minus open brackets. 1 plus fraction. 0, 0,082 over 12. Close brackets to the power minus 132. Close brackets equals, divide that by 0, 0,082 over 12. Boom. 584,010 rand 47 cents outstanding to the bank. Time to get jiggy in math. Let's get jiggy. Come on. What's up, Mr. Coulter? Yeah, boy. See nicely. I sent you a nice WhatsApp. Let's check. It's a picture. Uh, <laughs> is it PG-18? It's PG-8. PG-8, but I, I didn't get it. I swear I didn't get it. On where did you send it, bro? Okay. <clears throat> oh, how many numbers do you have? One. Okay, I sent you a double thumbs up. But Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so when you get a gap, we'll put this on screen. Uh, these yeah. are the device timings. Okay. Oh, oh, is that what you wanted to me to see? Yes, sir. Yeah. You see, when, when I'm not here, then you start late. No, no, no. I, I didn't see the, that's the name, man. You wanted yes, me yes. to see these four pictures, yeah. but then I didn't see. Where's the revised timing? I've got it here. Here's it on oh. the screen. Wait, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just put it up again. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Please learn this. This is your balance outstanding. We're now going to go on to trading of an asset. Very important. We now want to. So we did future value. We did uh, balance outstanding. We're now going to go into trading of an asset. Have Revise. a look at the screen. 
Okay, no, I think we're wrong now. Because these times are not right now, Sunny. Okay, I'll get the right one that I sent to you. Yeah, one no, o'clock. Three. One o'clock. We're gonna we're gonna break. It's already twenty to one. We got twenty minutes left. Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's go, let's go, let's go. As the name is my man from the Cape, Fanica. I'm from Cape right, Town. Watch not... Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, trade in. So we buy equipment. We buy equipment. Uh, let's say for 50,000 rand. Right. It needs to be traded in for new equipment after five years. Needs to be traded in. The minute, that's your clue. It needs to be traded in after five years for new equipment. The old equipment will depreciate. Depreciation is on the reducing balance method, red bell method, reducing balance method at 15% per annum. The new equipment will increase by 11% per annum inflation. A sinking fund is set up that earns 9% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate your monthly installment into the sinking fund for 12 months. Calculate your monthly installment into the sinking fund. How many marks is this? 12. Now, sometimes they break it up for you. Three marks, three marks, three marks, three marks. No problem. They've helped you a lot. But if they don't and they throw you into the deep end and they only give you one question like this for 12 marks, you still break it up according to the way I'm about to show you. So many of you, like I said, this is new work for you. You're going to repeat this when you go home. The main thing is that you understand it here. Why are we doing it now? So the first thing, guys. The first thing. Guys, finance is not easy. I'm making it easy for you. With the way I've broken it up for you, I'm making it a walk in the park for you. Trust me. This can be one of the most confusing and one of the most difficult sections for you to comprehend. But if you follow what I'm doing, I've simplified it till you can't simplify it any further. So here goes. Step number one in your answer. We need to calculate the scrap. So step number one, we calculate the scrap value. So A equal P into 1 minus I to the power 5. Because it's going to depreciate for 5 years. Step number 2, we calculate the new price. And that is inflation. A equal P into 1 plus I to the power 5. Step number 3, we calculate the value of the sinking fund that needs to be set up. And then we take number two minus number one. So we take the new price minus the scrap value. And then the last part, because we're opening up a sinking fund, we use FV in order to calculate X.
So that's the process. Three marks, three marks, two marks, three marks. So it's 11 marks, not 12. But it could be 11 or 12 marks, makes no difference. <laughs> One mark. Right. Do you want to do it on your own or you want me to? Come on, scrap values, substitute your values. So let's go. Let me do it for you. P, 50,000. Into one minus depreciation. 15%, so you scratch it out. You're not going to use that again to the power of five. That will give you. Let's all go to our calculators. 50,000, you all can see clearly. Let's go. 50,000 into one minus 0 0.15, close brackets to the power of five. 22,185 rands. 265, let's say 2656. I'm not going to round it up now. I'll round it up at the end. Onlineers, you following us? Onlineers, are you following us? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You got it. Well done. Sibu Siso. Well done. Well done. Well done. Let's do. Sadia, well done. Palesa, well done. Let's do the next part. 50,000 into 1 plus inflation. 0, 0,11 to the power 5. Let's go. Put that in. 50,000 into 1 plus 0, 0,11 to the power 5. 8425. That means your new equipment will cost you 84252,90776. So the value of the fund is going to be that minus that. Because you're trading it in. Minus 22,185,2656. Boom. 62, very good. 62,067,64. Oh, 642. I'm putting a tick here. I hope you all got that. Yes or no? Good. Onlineers, did you guys get that? Tolisi, Sweezy, Ruth, Sibosiso, well done. Well done. We are just substituting. I'm not moving fast at all. I've broken it up for you. I've substituted the values for you. All we did was use calculator. I cannot go slower than I'm going already. Rivoningo. Pull the handbrake. Pull the handbrake up, Mr. Kota. Can do. Can do. We're not. This rocket is stopping for nobody. Let's do some go. donuts. Do some donuts. Let's go. Now we're solving for X. So watch what we do. We're using the FV formula. So watch. I'm just erasing that. Let's find. The monthly repayment into the fund. So I'm using FV. 62067,642 is equal to X into 1 plus 9%. 0 0,09 over 12 to the power. 12 times how many years? 5 years. Minus 1 all over 0, 0,09 over 12. What is X? Let's calculate the monthly repayment into the fund. Start from your denominator. Start from your denominator. Multiply it and then divide it. 
So fraction 0, 0,09 over 12 multiplied by 62067,642. Divide that by open, open, one plus fraction over 12. Close brackets to the power 12 times 5 is 60. Minus 1, close bracket. Boom. Here we go. Final answer coming up. 822 rand. 91 cents per month. And there we go. There we go. So you break it up into scrap value. Depreciation. Depreciation. New price, inflation. Value of sinking fund, question number two, minus question number one. And then the last part, your FV, future value. Why? Because it's a sinking fund. So future value. And there we go. This question is done. Tasneem Nanabai, where you from? Tell us where you from. You got that answer right. Well done. Dua, well done. Olisi, well done. Para Zanga, well done. Question? Yebo. Mr. Kota, why are they talking about red cow? Was there any mention of a <laughs> Nothing. super caffeinated drink? No, I think they've watched some of our previous workshops. This time I had to... Can you see? When I'm away here, when the cat's away, the mice come out to play. The mice will play. The mice. <laughs> but it had nothing to do with today's show, I swear to God, on my life. It had nothing to do, it, to, to do with today's show. They must have watched some previous episodes. I'm going to have to take this tape out and put it into my VHS and rewind it and see... How oh, far? What did Mr. Kota say in the beginning of the session? In the beginning. <laughs> Sadia Mat Munaf. Well done, well done, well done. Right. I guess you're all following. Okay, let's do. It's 12.50. We got 10 minutes before break. We got 10 minutes before break. Let's do the image. So we did future value. We did balance outstanding. We did trading. We already 80%. We did depreciation. We did converting nominal to effective. Imagine how much work we did already today. Right. We only got 20% of finance to do for the year. We only got immediate payment, deferred payment, final payment. Let's do an immediate payment. Let's do the immediate payment. Watch here. Watch here. Let's do immediate. We're almost at the end. Immediate payment. When you make the first payment immediately. Right. So here's the story. You take out a loan for 500000 It needs to be repaid for 10 years. Uh, the interest rate, come make up an interest rate for me. 8,5%? No, give me a, something with the decimal. 9,5. All right. Let's take 9,5% per annum. Compounded monthly. The first payment is made immediately. This is how the question will appear in your exam. Or the day you took out the loan. Calculate the new revised monthly repayment. And it's worth five marks. Now, again, I'm telling you guys, listen and listen carefully. Do not use the way the memos do it. You use my shortcuts. You use my methods. You'll get the same answer. The memos, don't even try and make sense of some of the memos. They are rough. You won't make sense of it. 
You'll tell yourself, hi, this one, five marks. I just leave. Leave it. Now, if you pay attention, listen. If you pay attention, I promise you, you're going to get it right. If you pay attention, you're going to get it right. Onlineers, put your pens down and pay attention. We're almost at break. Right. No, man. Sibusiso. No. Trigonometry is paper two. We're doing paper two tomorrow, man. Yo, they want to do trigonometry today. How? We said today, paper one. Tomorrow, paper two. Oh, don't listen. My man. Right, let's go. PV, we know PV is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. Why? Because what is it? Low. But be careful. This is the trick. Come and show you a trick. Put your pens down. When we do an immediate payment, that means you receive 500,000 today. And let's say your monthly repayment was 5,000. So you went and you repaid. The day it came in is the day you repaid 5,000. So that means how much do you owe them? Do you still owe them 500,000? How much you owe them? 500 minus 5. Eh? That means your PV is no longer PV. It's PV minus your first month's payment. Yes or no? Ah, when you understand that, now everything else will fall into place. PV is no longer called PV. PV is called PV minus X. Why? You paid in your first month's repayment. So your present value is no longer 500,000. It's 500,000 minus what you paid in. Right now, leave your pens down. We need to solve for X, monthly repayment. So what are, which alphabet are we looking for? Right now, put down your pens. Otherwise, you're not going to understand. You're going to say, Mr. K, moving too fast. We don't understand the, but you are not looking. How can you understand? So watch. Let's take this X onto the other side. Follow me. Follow me. PV equals X into 1 plus 1 plus I minus N all over I minus X comes on this side as well. But we need to solve for, so now we take out the highest common factor. PV equals, there's a term, there's a term, we take out X into 1 plus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I plus X divided by X. X divided by X. So we say plus 1. Where did that 1 come from? We took out X from X. So I got Y. Now we solve for X. Now what is PV? 500,000 is equal X into 1 minus 1 plus. What's I? 9,5. 0, 0,095 over 12 to the power minus 12 times how many years? 10 years all over i, 0, 0.095 over 12 plus 1. So what is x equal to? x is equal to 500,000 divided by this whole thing. So let's do it. Go to your calculator. Five, put there, fraction. Press your fraction key. Put 500,000 in your numerator. Over, open brackets, fraction. 1 minus, open brackets, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0,095 over 12. Guys, if you don't know how to use your calculator, FYI, for your information, you're going to fail. To the power, minus 12 times 10. And you won't just fail. You will fail nicely, beautifully, like a work of art. Hi, Bo, Mr. Koto. <laughs> ah, if they don't know how to use calculator, ah, whose problem is that? They can't make their problem my problem. We're all going to pass <laughs> elegantly. <laughs>
No, they're going to get a distinction in elegantly. 6387,23. That is your final answer. Six three eight seven comma two three. If you did not get that hand, uh, that that uh, that right, it means your fingers did not punch into the calculator. Correct. Go home and start practicing on how to use a calculator. Are you trying to say my fingers are too fat, Mr. Coater? Or, or maybe you're lacking some fingers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you got four. Yes. We take the 500,000 and we divide it by everything besides the X. So 500, so basically what are you going to put into your 500, you're going to press your fraction key. Firstly, you press your fraction. In the numerator, you're going to put 500,000. In your denominator, you're going to put all of this. So you're going to say, open brackets, one minus, open brackets, one plus fraction. 0, 0,095 over 12, all over. 0, 0,095 over 12 plus 1, close brackets, equal. Numerator will be 500,000. Denominator will be all of that. Your answer will be 6387,23. If you don't know how to still get it, come to me during break. I'll teach you how to use a calculator. Uh, come on, it's, it's there. There's the button there that says fraction, man. Yo, man. Ay, man. Margelle. It's one o'clock on the dot. It's one o'clock on the dot. Right. I said, hey, what do you think? How much time should we give them? We need a break, eh? Yeah, I know. Hey, Sweezy K, I got it. You on a roll. Well done, Sweezy. <laughs> got it. Stella, well. Everybody yeah. wants a break. Are you guys tired? You need a break. Your brains are fried. Some of you haven't done so much maths in your whole life. Some of you don't have so much maths work in your school maths notebooks. Some of you do maths in your accounting book at the back. Check out the screen, Mr. Kota. So where are we going? We're going 115. So are we taking an hour? Yes. No, we need to shorten it, eh? No, we need to shorten it. Let's go. Let's go to 145. I give you guys 45 minutes. So quarter to two, quarter. To, yes, because I'm a still do functions and calculus. 45, 45. That's the name. That's the name. We're on break until 13.45. 45 minute break. Okay. So but let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. I'm just clearing this. 40. Okay. 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 My bad. Wait, wait, wait. I'm coming back. All right. Wait. Back a big man. Is it? It's back, man. It's back, man. What time, uh, Mr. Kautier? 1.45? Uh, 13.45. We resume 13.45. So tell me, what we was your... We resume 13.45. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. You guys learned a lot. We're getting a lot of thumbs up here. Well done, well done, well done. I'll see you guys at a quarter to two. Remember, we're finishing three o'clock on the dot today. Tomorrow, five o'clock. Okay, four. I've got exams to write, eh? Remember that. I've also got to swap. Yeah, okay. Okay, Mr. Kota, we'll right, see you at my, my friends here in the front, they want to come online. They want to do some inter... Come stand here. Come, 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 come. South Africa wants to see you. Come, man. Come. They're too shy. That's the name. Okay, They're no problem. Shy. I tell you what, Mr. Kota. If anyone, who, who is our future leaders of the country that doesn't mind being interviewed? Come. Are you guys coming? Okay, Mr. Kota. Yeah.
I'm, I'm going yeah. I'm going for a lunch break and I will resume again. Okay, wait, we got a learner here. We got, let's see. Do we have any learners that would like to come here and talk? No? Uh, come. No, he'll ask you questions. You just need to answer. She's coming. About the program. Hey, okay, we got okay. people here. Tamin, don't go. Okay. As the name, we got some brave souls here. Well done. Okay. Well done, well done. Come sit here. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Tell me, how is the session going in the at the Al Ghazali Wall in Pretoria? How is the weather? How is the vibe with the other grade 12 learners? And tell me, are you going to get 100% in your mathematics, seeing that you have attended Mr. Kota and Okaf session? And uh, as you can see, that the weather is weathering here in Al Ghazali. Yeah, okay. uh, we are learning a lot here, yeah, and I'm pretty sure that. Yeah, you see this uh, examination. We all of us yeah, are gonna AC. Yeah. Are you enjoying okay, it? Tell me. Yeah, yeah, we are enjoying it. Give a <laughs> give a shout out to the school that you're from. Which school you from? I'm from Himalaya Secondary. Yeah, I'm from Himalaya Secondary. Yeah. In the house, class of 2023. Oh, my name is Fotato Leriva, but I'm known as Wisba. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Let's speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kauta. Okay, so then we're also taking out. We over and out here from Al Ghazali. I'll see you guys at. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So that was Mr. Kota over there. That brings us to lunch break. We're currently having a lunch break. And we have been, you have been tuned to the grade 12 uh, maths workshop. We are currently doing maths paper one. Uh, it's not a little bit late uh, after nine. Uh, and the session will go all the way to about three o'clock. So we're just having a little bit of a lunch break. Um, make sure that you have something to eat. Uh, hydrate. Uh, stretch your legs and we'll resume again with Matt's paper one. Um, so tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. we will be conducting a workshop. We will be conducting a workshop on Matt's paper two. It'll start from nine o'clock to three o'clock and also would love uh, for you also to register. It's very important to register um, because we will be hosting a competition and this competition aims to award academic excellence for learners that have participated in the uh, examination. And how the competition works is it will open up in January 2024 and all online registered participants will receive an email with more information and also a form uh, that they can submit their results for the June as well as the final results. So it's open for grade 10, 11 and 12. So I'm going to play you a video of Rory Sang and Rory Sang uh, participated in our competition last year and he scored 100% in mathematics. He's currently studying at UCT. So let's listen to what Rory Sang had to say. Hello there. My name is Rory Sang Makaila. I am in my first year of my undergraduate studies in natural science at the University of Cape Town. And as a result of hard work, dedication, support from friends, family, and teachers, and OCAF's commitment to ensuring quality education for South Africans, I was able to obtain 100% in my metric uh, examination for mathematics in 2022. So this was a culmination of very hard work that has been put in by myself and my teachers from earlier grades, more especially grade 11. I mean, this is a crucial part of your schooling career because universities offer provisional and conditional acceptances based on grade 11 results. 
and it's very heartbreaking to be willing to work hard towards your dreams and metric and not having anything to show for that with your grade 11 results. So it's very crucial that you work hard. And OCAF SAA has been greatly instrumental in me reaching my goals in metric. I believe that you can derive great value in attending the OCAF SAA mathematics workshops. I have um, gotten a lot of help from them and I have a lot to show for it. So please just check that out and keep on working on your dreams and ensuring that you have a bright future for yourself. Lastly, I would like to thank OCAP SA for their commitment in essentially building a, bit, a better South Africa because we know that um, in the future, careers that will be in great demand are those that involve science and mathematics. And by attending these workshops, you'll be able to ensure that you participate in the future economy by working in these industries. So thank you very much to OCAF SA and good luck on your examinations. So there we go. That is the details. You can connect to us via social media. Lots of people have been asking us, we can they find the recording and we can they get the video. So this is a YouTube uh, live stream and the video will be hosted on OCAF's um, YouTube platform. So if you go to YouTube and you search for OCAF South Africa, what you can do is you can subscribe and this is where you, you'll get alerts of our future workshops and you'll find the video on our YouTube platform. So that was Rory Sang and he was talking about his participation in the grade 12 workshop that we had last year. We had about 13,000 participants uh, logged on and we had about 24,000 uh, YouTube views. So yes, this is the grade 12 workshop hosted by OCAP South Africa, the Department of uh, Basic Education, uh, K-Way Institute, as well as iSkills. So we'll come back after the break and we'll share some more information with you. So enjoy your break and we'll see you in a short while.
Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving, prosperous society. However, the South African education system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Aukaf South Africa Education Wakaf to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 6,000 matriculants. At the Darul Arqam High School in Mitchell's Plain, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, it was a life-changing experience. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as Iqra, read, educating our community is an act of faith. With your help, we can transform many more lives. Awqaf South Africa, share the care. When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, and communities celebrate. Okaf South Africa, a charitable Wakaf organization, makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a wide variety of charitable causes. Visit okafsa.org.za to discover how your wakaf can bless our community with a legacy of care. Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving and prosperous society. However, the South African educational system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Educational Waka Fund to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 40,000 matriculants. At the schools participating in our program, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, it was a life-changing experience. So I've never reached that kind of height before. It was quite a milestone and I believe that our co has been quite instrumental in me reaching that milestone. Um, and I also like the spirit, Mr. Kota made sure that we're always engaged with the content. So for me, that's what made it a very um, positive. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as read, educating our community is an act of faith with your help, we can transform many more lives. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to the OCAF SA Grade 12 Maths Workshop. We will be re uh, resuming shortly. We just thought that we'll share some um, photo highlights of what's happening. Currently, Mr. Kota is at the Al Ghazali wall in Pretoria, and they've, uh, he's got a cohort of learners that's also taking part in the in the workshop. They're enjoying themselves. And we thought that we'll share some of those photos to give you an idea of what's happening. So let's take a look at that.
This is a video insert submitted by Mr. Kota. He took this during his lunch break and can clearly see him being uh, interacting with some of the participants that's uh, uh, part of the cohort that's uh, attending the session at the Al Ghazali wall. Let's stick. Okay, we're here at Al Ghazali during the break of our Okaf Kway Grade 12 workshop. And we've got some learners standing here from which school are you guys? Himalaya Secondary. And where's Himalaya Secondary? In Lodium. Tell me, what's your experience at the K-Way workshop? Is this your first time here? Yes, it's our first time here. And uh, what, what's your experience? Tell us. Uh, Did you enjoy? We learned a lot. And so much wisdom. It's much more easier. Yeah. And how to answer questions. That's beneficial. Would you be attending more of our workshops? Of course. Yeah. Yes. And uh, you're more confident. Uh, what's your confidence level from before your workshop and after your workshop? Exactly what she said. Yeah. Yes. So we can we, we can expect some top results from you guys in in the finals. Sure. Yes. Anything you'd like to say to Okaf and Kwe? Thank you. Lovely guys. <laughs> So there we go. That was Mr. K and some of the grade 12 uh, participants that's taking part of that uh, of that in-person workshop. So this is a session hosted on OCAF SA's uh, YouTube platform and Facebook. Thank you for your comments and your suggestions and your interactivity. We are going to be resuming shortly. We're just waiting for Mr. Kota to, to fill up. And don't forget, this is the maths paper one of the grade 12 workshop right so let's see mr kota is with us let's go, let's go. assalamu alaikum brother ibrahim let's hope go, that you are go. well i think we live here we go let's get the show on the road i think we live as a man can let us know where we at can yes, you guys yeah. hear me and see me clearly? I can't hear her name. I can see you. I can see you. I can see you. So we must just see if your technician can assist. There we go. Now? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Absolutely. Loud and clear. Over and out, Captain. Okay, so it looks like you reloaded, refueled. Let's go to Jupiter. <laughs> oh, that is so hey, my man. Right, let's yes. go, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to the last round of today. People are still enthusiastic. I still see the lights are still on. They haven't yet shut down. There's no load shedding in their eyes from ESCOM hasn't shut their brains down yet. But don't worry, tomorrow is day two. I think you know what to expect. Let's start with calculus. Guys, we're starting with calculus. The first thing you need to know in calculus, you all know, is first principles. I hope you guys have all done calculus or been introduced to calculus at school. Then we've got derivative which is the power rule. We got first principles, which is using the formula. We got the next topic, differentiation. We got the next topic, finding the equation of tangents to functions. We got the cubic graph. And then we have the last topic. Now remember, not only are these the topics, the overview of the whole of calculus, this is worth 40 marks in your exam. We have the last topic called optimization or application of calculus in real life. Real life calculus, real life scenarios. 
Now, this is paper one. First principles is five marks. Derivative, three marks. Differentiation, five marks. Finding equations of tangents, you'll get a question. Anything to do with tangents, six marks. The cubic graph, 12 marks. Five and three, five and five is 10. And three is 13. And six is 19. 29, 31, nine marks there. Nine marks there, total marks 40. Out of 150, almost a third of your paper is calculus. Make sure you master it. And not only is this the overview, your questions will be asked in this order. So if this is question number, say, four in your paper, that would be 4.1, 4.2. This will be 4.2.1, 4.2.2. Let's call it 4.3, 4.4. 4.5, 4.6. Very important. Don't go for that. Absolutely important. Let's go, guys. First principles. Shh. Let's start with the first topic using. Now, I just want to tell you the word calculus means gradient. So first principles is finding the gradient using the formula. Derivative means finding the gradient using the power rule. Differentiation means finding the gradient for more complex graphs of functions. So all this is finding the gradient. If you never knew it, now you do. For a straight line, we use y2 minus y1. Listen, for a straight line, to find the gradient, we use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. For any other graph, to find the gradient of that graph or that graph, we either use first principles or we use derivative to find the gradient. So we're either using the formula to find the gradient or we're using the power rule to find the gradient. I'm here to put it for you in perspective. If you've never understood calculus before, today you're going to understand it. If you pay attention. Now come and show you something. Listen, put down your pens. Come and show you something to blow your mind. So you want me to prove to you that it means gradient. So put your pens down. All of you, online and on siteers put your pens down and watch the screen. Onliners, are you there? Josephine, let's kill calculus. Moslem, finally calculus. Yay! Let's go. Watch. Listen. Mamela. Open up your ears. Open up your brains. You don't need to know this. I'm about to show you something. You know that this is a parabola. You know that that is a secant. A secant touches at two points and a tangent passes at one point. So if this point here, we want to find the gradient on the parabola. So this point here, we don't have its value. We'll call it x. And its y value is f of x. Yes or no? Isn't the y value f of x? Now, if the distance between there and there is h, that means this one's x value. Let's call this point a and point b. That one is x plus h. x plus h. And its y value will be f of x plus h. Yes or no? Now, watch here. Watch. I'm going to show you some magic. Let's call this x. Let's put it in coordinate form. x value is x and f of x. And this one's x value is x plus h. And its y value is f of x plus h. Now watch here. Let's call this x2, y2. Let's call that x1, y1. So the general gradient on the parabola, the general gradient, f dash x, f prime x, 
is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Isn't that my gradient formula? So what's y2? f of x plus h minus f of x all over x2 minus x1 plus x minus x cancel. The general gradient on the parabola is given by f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, which is the same as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now you might ask, what does limit as h approaches 0 mean? So if the distance there is h, so say it's 10 units and it's getting smaller, we want to find out the maximum distance that that secant can travel until it almost becomes a tangent, but it doesn't. So if that distance is 10, as it comes down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, what number is it approaching? Zero. So let's convert this to English. The general gradient on f of x is given by the maximum distance that the secant will travel to becoming a tangent y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's first principles. That's what it means. You don't need to know this. You don't need to know it. I'm just trying, I've just done this to prove to you where we got the formula from. And where did we get the formula from? Gradient. So what does that prove to us? That f dash x, g dash x, h dash x means what? Gradient. Make sense? Good. Onliners, make sense? Does that make sense to you, onliners? I hope you're following. Let's start. Now we start. You don't need to write this. Now, if f of x is equal to minus 4x squared plus 2x, find f dash x by first principles. That's your instruction for you to use the formula. Now put your pens down. Put your pens down. Let's do it together. Your teachers may show you a different way. They might tell you go straight into the formula. Don't. It's a recipe for disaster. Find f of x plus h first. f of x plus h is equal to minus 4 into for every x. What must I put? So we got x plus h squared plus 2 into x plus h. Not only am I using this to explain to you, this is an exam question from a past paper. So let's score our first four marks, five marks. Let's remove the brackets. Minus 4, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x, remember, multiplying out, plus 2h. Let's remove the brackets. Minus 4x squared minus 8xh minus 4h squared plus 2x plus 2h. That's step number one f of x plus h. Step number two, f dash x. Write your formula, you get a mark for it. Limit h approaches zero. f of x plus h, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Step number three, substitute. So we say limit. You must write the limit right through until the end. f of x plus h minus 4x squared minus 8xh, minus 4h squared, plus 2x plus 2h, minus f of x, minus minus 4x squared, plus 4x squared, minus 2x. We change both these sides because this negative here will change both the sides all over h. Minus 4x squared, plus 4x squared, minus 2x, plus 2x. Step number four, take out the highest common factor of h. So now, this is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. We take out h. What am I left with? Minus 8x minus 4h 
plus if I take out h from it to all over h h and h cancels now step number five you say but h approaches zero therefore f dash x is equal to here's your final answer coming up right that's zero zero times minus four is zero what am i left with minus eight x plus two and there we go your full first five marks for first principles take that down now you can take it down learn it when the link goes up onto youtube or onto the okaf youtube site watch this over and over until you can do it by yourself correction there mr k correction there mr k this video is available instantly if you go wow. onto the okaf youtube page yeah. OCAF of africa the yeah. video is there go to the live section and you'll see grade 12 maths it is there it will not wow. go anywhere thank else. you thank you so much as a name for that it's up already guys and it will be up permanently so you can always go to it and you can refer to it and reflect on it now i'd it love to spend it. the entire day doing hundreds of thousands of examples for you but the purpose of today and tomorrow is to compress the whole six months work in two days So I can teach you how it's done to master it. You know, the old saying still holds true. You can take a horse to a water. You can't make him drink. I can show you how it's done. I can't make you master it. Mastery takes place at home with practice and past papers and booklets. It's gone because h approaches zero. Zero times minus four. H approaches zero. Zero times minus four is zero. So you're only left with minus eight x plus two. Right. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Okay, you guys have taken this one down. Let's do a little bit of a higher order question. Now this in 99.9 .9 of the cases this is the type you'd see a parabola a parabola to find first principles what happens if i tell you minus 2 over x there we go let's see we crack that one come on liners kway students you know this you've done this before I've done it with you before. And if you really want to try something crazy, then do G of X is equal to one over the square root of X. Oh my Lord. This one is double star, double higher order. <laughs> try it on your own. I'm not even going to do that one with you here. Maybe we'll do that one in our next workshop. Right, I'm erasing here. Let's see how well you guys do. So if f of x is equal to that, find f dash x, find the general gradient by using the formula, by first principles. Let's go. Now, I'd love for you to do it on your own. Unfortunately, we don't have time. Let's check our onlineers. Are you guys managing there? David Ndolose. Sibusiso, well done. Minus 8x plus 2. Boitumelo, well done. Well done, well done. Got it. Dua, got it. Moslem, got it. Sally Ann, Sadia, well done. Akila. Hey, hello, Akila. <laughs> My KW student, all You're the cooking way. With gas today, Mr. Kota. You're cooking with gas today. Rocket yeah, fuel. We are on fire. Rocket fuel, Baba. Rocket fuel. Let's go. Let's dollar this one like a boss. 
When you're done with your paper at the end of the year, you must sign it off. You must say, done by K-Way, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Let's go. Get our answer. Right. The first step, F of X plus H, right? F of X plus H is equal to minus 2 over X plus H. Now formula, F dash X is equal to the maximum distance that the secant will travel to becoming a tangent, F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. Limit as H approaches 0. F of X plus H is that, minus 2 over X plus H, minus F of X plus 2 over X. Divided by h over 1. I'm moving it to the side because we don't want a fraction over a fraction. So that's the same. We can tip in times. Times 1 over h. So divided by h and times 1 over h is the same thing. Now algebra. Algebra. We're subtracting two fractions. So what's my LCD? I'm now going to do LCD. X into X plus H. So we left with X times minus 2 is minus 2X plus X and X will cancel. 2 into X plus H times 1 over H. Limit as H approaches 0. What am I left with? Minus 2X plus 2X plus 2H all over x squared plus x h. I just remove the brackets times 1 over h. Minus 2x plus 2x will cancel. h and h will cancel. I'm going to move over to the side. So the limit as h approaches 0, we left with 2 over x squared plus x h. Now you say, but h approaches 0. Therefore, your final answer, therefore, F dash X is equal to 2 over. That's 0. 0 times X is 0. So what am I left with? 2 over X squared. Boom. There's your final answer on the side. Guys, again, I'm telling you, I'm not doing rough calculation. You will answer it in the paper exactly. Only thing you'll carry on at the bottom, I move to the side because I didn't have enough space. Question? Let's check the question. Let's go. <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no point of derivative. It's point of inflection, but we'll get back to that. We'll get to that just now. The, this is the derivative. 2 over x squared is the derivative, is the gradient of this graph. Right? Now we do derivative. Derivative is the shortcut of getting the gradient, not using this long way. If you went and used the shortcut and they ask you first principles, you will get zero. You only use this if the question dictates by first principle. Do you know what's another way that they could ask you? Another, in, who knows what's another instruction for you to use first principles? Listen, in one paper, they told you find F of X plus H by, watch here, watch here, by, the definition of the derivative. And that doesn't mean anything. It's the same thing. It's another instruction for you to use the formula. So don't panic. When you see by the definition of the derivative, it means the same thing by first principles. Are you all with me? Good. Right. Let's do the power rule. We're now going into the power rule. Derivative. We got this. Mashlatsi. You got this. By definition, Lazarus. Yes. By definition. 
Why do we need derivative? Ah, you will see that when we do optimization. We're finding the gradient. Right, watch. I'm clearing the frame. Right, here goes. Um, right. <coughs> here goes. Right. The derivative, the derivative means the gradient. And when they don't tell you, then you use what we call the power rule. And what is the power rule? Step number one, you take the power, you multiply it by the coefficient to get your new coefficient. And then you minus one from the power to get your new power. And we do that for each term. Meaning if f of x is equal to 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x minus 3. Then f dash x will equal to, let's do, let's apply the derivative. Let's find the gradient. Let's apply the power rule. Step number one, power times co. So here goes. Power times coefficient. Three times six is how much? 18x. And then minus one from the power. Three minus one is two. That's your first term. We're going to do it for each term. Two times minus four. Minus eight x. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 times 8 is 8. x to the power 1 minus 1 is 0. What is the derivative of a whole number or constant? Y. A constant. x equal 2 is a straight line. Does a straight line have any gradient? That's why it's 0. A constant is a straight line and a straight line got no gradient. So your final answer is going to be 18x squared minus 8x plus 8 times 1. That's 0. So 8 times, any base to the power 0 is 1. 1 times 8 is 8. There's your answer. It's 1 power less. So if your original is a cube, your derivative is a parabola. Squared. Huh? And if your original is a parabola, your derivative is one power less, a straight line. If your original is a straight line, your, per, your derivative is a constant. And when you find the derivative of a con constant, it's zero. That's how you zero a graph, by its gradient. Oh, never saw that. Now, shh, pay attention. It could be f of x, we write f dash x. It could be y. Listen. It could be in the terms of y. Now, we don't say f dash y. We say dy over dx when we apply the power rule. We are deriving y in terms of x. That's... Just a second way in which it can be asked. That's what dy. When they say find dy over dx, that's what they mean. They're telling you, use the power rule to differentiate, to find the derivative. Another way. Shh. Those of you who have done calculus, you've seen it. Another way it can be asked is like this. Same thing, same scenario dx in brackets you've seen that when you apply the power rule you just say is equal to that's all now you are instructing the person who's marking i'm now removing the brackets and now i i'm applying the power rule don't go say ddx don't come up with your own math symbols a grade 12 has got the tendency to create their own mathematics in a paper 
And then they end up with Olympic rings in the report and they want to know why. Right. Now pay attention. So we all understand this. The power rule. The power rule. Power times coefficient. So just think of a sword. You're cutting the head off. You're starting from the top with the sword. You're cutting the head off. But you're making sure the head is off. So you minus one from the power. Blood spurting, heads rolling. That is called differentiating. We're killing it. Death by differentiation. Right, watch. Now we're doing what we call differentiation. The process. Differentiation. And this is done. It's the process of for more complex functions. Now, if you listen to me, you pay attention, you'll get them all right. We do it in three steps. B, D, A. Before, B for before. So before you differentiate, before you apply the power rule, we remove brackets. We remove third signs, we remove unknowns from denominator, if there's a fraction. We get it in a straight line. So we're about to execute them all. So before execution, we put them in a straight line, we pull out all their clothes. Removing all their clothes in mathematics means getting them in their simplest form. So we get it in a straight line, we get them linear, we get them all in a straight line. We get all our terms in a straight line. And here we use algebra. Step number two, D. Death by differentiation. We are about to whoop, to whoop the heads off. Power rule. Derivative. D for derivative. Power rule. And after differentiation, we want to sew the heads back on and we want them to look nice. So we write the answer with positive powers. We want them to smile. So please, you do differentiation in three parts. B, D, A. Before death, death and after death. Are you listening? Good. Open your ears, open your brains. I'm going to do four examples. If you can master these four, you can master them all. Four types. Type one, two, three, four. B, D, A. And please, in the exam, don't go write B, D, A. This is your mental process. Your teacher will write W, T, F. What the fish? What the fricadelle? Oh, right, let's go. Culture. Right, here we go. Type one. Let's go. Type one. Now they tell us y equals two root x minus five x squared plus three all over cube root x ha that's type one five marks baba find dy over dx now this is differentiation because it's not simple it's not in a straight line now you're going to apply bda so type one shh, type one is when we have one term in the denominator so that's your question in the exam answer Let's do the before part. So y equals 2x to the half over, this is x to the power a third, minus 5x squared over x to the power a third, plus 3 over x to the power a third. You all understand that? We separate them all. Ah, the denominator belongs to all men. Really? 
really? Right, now let's simplify. Algebra, y equals 2, x. What is a Now we're dividing and bases are the same. A half minus a third. What's it? Minus 5 over 6, I think. Let's go. A half minus a third. 1 over 6. Minus 5 x. 2 minus a third. 2 minus a third. It's 5 over 3. Plus 3. Bring that up to the top. X to the power minus a third. So there we go. We got them all linear. We, this is not derivative. This is still algebra. So there's step number one. The before part. That's before derivative. BDA. D for derivative. Therefore dy over dx. Power rule. 1 over 6 times 2. 2 over 6 is 1 over 3x. 1 over 6 minus 1. Minus 6 over 6 is minus 5 over 6. Positive times negative is a negative. 5 times 5 is 25 over 3x. 5 over 3 minus 1 is minus 3 over 3 is 2 over 3. Negative times positive is a negative. A third times three is one x minus a third minus one minus a third minus three over three is minus four over three. I ask you, can that be my final answer? BDA. My answer must be with positive powers. Yes or no? So this is equal to one over three x to the power five over six in the denominator. Minus 25 over 3, x to the power 2 over 3, minus 1 over x to the power 4 over 3. There's your final answer. That's your final answer. And you'll get 5 marks for that. So your derivatives are done in 3 parts. BDA. Your derivatives are done in BDA. Get it in a straight line. Apply the power rule. Make sure your answers are with positive powers. Manier, you are right. Sharp, sharp. I know you're tired. Relax. Every time your brain says shut down, you tell it shut up. It's 25 past 2. Come on. Before you know it, the day is almost over. That's type number 1. Type number one. What the fish, Lebron? <laughs> what the fish? What the frog? Let's go. That's the end of type one. Let's go into type two. Let's go into type two. Type two. I tell you f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. I want f dash x. Right. What is the difference between type 1 and type 2? Type 1 had one term in the denominator. Type 2 got how many terms? Two terms. So what do we do? We factorize and cancel. What do we do? Right, let's do it. Let's do it together. I don't have time, guys. Although it seems like we got a lot of time before 3 o'clock. Before you know it, today is done. And we lost so much time this morning, unfortunately. So in our answer, f of x, not f dash x. You're not doing the derivative. You're simplifying what they gave you. If you went and wrote f dash x, you get zero. They put a big line cross through it. Right, let's factorize. x squared minus 9 is difference of two squares. x minus 3, x plus 3 over x plus 3. So we factorize. Now we cancel. That and that cancels out. So f of x is equal to x minus 3. 
Is that my final answer? No. Why? I need F dash X. So now, we only got two terms there. So therefore, F dash X. Right, there's a one there and there's a one there. So one times one is one. X to the power one minus one is zero. What's the derivative of a constant? So that will fall away. So you're left with one times one. One times one? Grade ones? One times one? Two. Yeah, nice, nice. One times one is two. One times one is two. Don't worry, you're going to do very well, and I'll be there to give you your certificate of failure. One times one is two. Beautiful. Why, bro? Nah, dolly, double B. Mr. Kota, we don't they speak must, like that. They you must do that in the exam, Mr. Name. They must do that. Speak. They must go and say one times one is two. It's three. <laughs> they will meet Moses. They will meet it's three. It's Shosha Loza. They will meet Mudimu. I promise you, they will meet Mudimu in the exam. Don't worry. They must say one times one is two. One times one is two. Beautiful. Why? That's type two. Let's go into type three. Type three. Let's go dx. Let's put it in that format. Let's say minus two over five square root x plus three over x squared minus Let's be a bit adventurous. X squared minus 4 over X minus 2. Those of you who took the previous one down, you can start with this one already. In your answer, you need to simplify what's in the bracket. Get that in a straight line first. Get that in a straight line first. Let's see how you dala with the masala. <laughs> this is an exam question from a past paper. I wish we had until five o'clock today. You are tired. Brains is fried. You are weak. You are weak. I like uh, my we, chips crispy. They are babalas with meds. They are <laughs> drunk on meds. Ah, uh -uh, too much of nothing can kill you. Too much of meds hey, hey, will make you a boss. What's a kid, man? Right, let's go. Shh. You should be done. Who's done? Onliners, who's done? Do this oh, last one. Yeah, Neo, Neo, Neo Mokena, you got minus zero. Well done. That will be your final report, Mark. <laughs> that will be your final report, Mark, minus zero. You will get Neo. Well done, Mokena. Where are you from, Baba? Minus zero. I'd like to see that on your report. Put minus zero. Don't worry. I would not stress. Right, minus 2 over 5, root x is x to the half, plus 3x to the minus 2, minus, this here is the difference of two squares, x minus 2, x plus 2, over x minus 2, that and that will cancel, dx, we still haven't differentiated, minus 2 over 5. X to the plus half will come up X to the minus a half. Plus 3X to the minus 2. Minus times X. Minus X minus 2. Right. Now we got it in a straight line. Right, Neo? Who got minus 0? <laughs> you got jokes, Baba. 
minus zero savage landi we yeah yeah Mr. K making us catch strays. Yo, I never heard that one before from Slick Lizard. Catch strays, bro. What does that mean? Catch what does strays. it mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm learning new lingo here, bro. I'm here learning brand new. You're catching strays, bro. Oh, my word. This is equal to, right. Now we differentiate. Negative times negative is a positive. 2 and 2 will cancel 1 over 5 x minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2 negative times positive is a negative 2 times 3 is 6 x minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 there's a 1 there's a 1 1 times minus 1 minus 1 x 1 minus 1 is 0 and that Two will fall away. Let's write it with positive powers. One over five. X to the power three over two in the denominator. Minus six over X to the power three. Minus one times one is one. That's your final answer. You'll get five marks for that. I'm giving you different scenarios. I'm giving you different scenarios. Last scenario. And then we are done with so that means we did first principles, we did derivative, we did differentiation. Then we so we done with derivatives or different. Then we going on to equation of tangents, the cubic graph and application. So you know where we started, you know where we going. Listen to me. Listen to me. We are minusing one from the power. Am I right? Listen. I'm going to show you something now that you going. Your jaw is going to drop. Remember. No, oh, this was that one. Okay, let's clear that frame. Remember. We are minusing one from the power. Yes or no? And what is that to get our gradient? Another word for gradient is what? Ah, oh, okay. Must I teach you new words for this? Come, I teach you new words. Wait, can I show you something? Look at this. Where do we minus one from the power? Watch this formula. M S to the minus one. Isn't that your speed formula? And isn't another word for speed velocity? So therefore, another word for gradient is derivative. Another word for derivative is speed. Another word for speed is velocity. All of it means the bloody same thing. When you finding the derivative of the graph, you finding the speed of the graph. When you finding the derivative of the graph, you are finding the velocity of the graph. That's why we say m s to the minus one. And m s to the minus two is second derivative. Second derivative in is called point of inflection in math. Another word from science, m s to the minus two is called acceleration. So therefore, another word for point of inflection is called second derivative, and another word for second derivative is called acceleration. So when they ask you for the point of acceleration, they asking you for second derivative. When they say find the speed, they asking you for first derivative. Make a note of this. We're going to be using it. Is it all making sense to you? Much more to come. I'm here to expand your brains, although your brains are at its what's end right now.
Tonight you're going to dream of me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't have your minds in the gutters, man. You will be dreaming. You are sitting in a workshop. You're going to be dreaming. You are being changed by, chased by derivatives. You are going to be hiding within the square root hole. Don't worry. It's normal. So tomorrow, if, if any of you dream of maths tonight, let me know tomorrow, right? What nightmare? That's not a nightmare. Dreaming about maths is utopia. It's paradiso. Less paradiso. <laughs> right. You got it. You took this down. Right. Watch this. Watch this. Now you're going to love this next topic. Watch. Guess what? We're 50% through calculus for the whole year. Watch. We did first principles. We did derivative. We did the whole topic on differentiation. I explained to you point of inflection, second derivative, acceleration, gradient, first derivative, speed, velocity. Now we're doing, put the heading, finding equations of tangents to functions. Or do you want me to do one more? No, no, let's not do this one now. I'll, if we got enough time tomorrow, I'll do you one more time. But it's fine. With this, you're more than, more than capable to handle your paper. Right. If f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x, find the equation of the tangent. And you know the tangent is y is equal to mx plus c. 2f of x at x equal minus 1. 5 marks. Right, take the question down and put down your pens. Let's have some fruit fruit juice. Tropical. Apple and the banana. The apple. Right, let's go. Don't look at me like that. You want there's an extra juice here. You want the juice? Ask, I'll give. Ask and thou shalt receive. You want me? You want me? There, take it. Faga. There's it. All right, let's go. I'm going to give you a template. Follow the template religiously. The first thing we want, listen and listen carefully. Put down your pens. Onliners, put down your pens. If you can't see the question, log off and come back in. It means your internet is poor. You got load shedding. If f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x, find the equation of the tangent to f of x at x equal minus 1. Now, the tangent is given by y equals mx plus c. What do we need? We need a gradient and we need a point. Do I have a point? No, I got x. So we're going to say f of minus 1 to get y. 3 into minus 1 squared minus 4 into minus 1. So that will give me 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. That means my point is minus 1 and 7. You need x, you need y. So there we go. There we go. We got our point. We got our point. We got our point. We didn't have our point. We found our point. What am I short of, guys? Right, so that's where we use derivative. So to find the gradient, the general gradient, we say f dash x. Pay attention, don't write, pay attention. So 2 times 3, power rule, 2 times 3, 6x minus 4. Now we want the m of the graph. We want the m of the graph. So we say, therefore, f dash, we got x is minus 1, is 6 into minus 1 minus 4. Minus 6, minus 4, minus 10. 
So that's the M of our graph. So we got the gradient, we got the point. We need Y is equal to MX plus C. Therefore, so guys, step number one, get X and Y. Step number two, derivative. Step number three, you plug in your X into your derivative. Step number four, Y minus Y1 equals M into X minus X1. So Y is equal to MX plus C. I just use this formula, it's easier. So now, Y minus seven is equal to M, I found M, minus 10 into X minus minus one, plus one. Y minus seven is equal to minus 10 X minus 10. Y, here's your final answer coming up. The equation of your tangent, minus 10x, minus 10 plus 7, minus 3. There we go, the equation of your tangent. Five marks, done in four parts. Chuck, away. Tate let me brew. Ah, Pashash, Dolly, Didi. Yashan. Not fair, Mr. Kota. Tomorrow I want the camera be on the crowd. So I can see what interaction you're having there. I think they're they excluded. Are, they are broken here in the front. They are dying. Jesus. You must see them here. You are must they... see them. They are mad. They have lost it. I can see the vein burning. Even the smoke of smoke is and wise are coming out of their freaking heads. Oh, my. Oh, my. I can see the smoke they coming are breathing. through my They are breathing calculus. And they are farting functions. I can but smell you, the functions in the air. But you know what? That rubber is eating the tar now, you know? That's why they ah, smoke. This is rough. This is rough on another level. Rough, where rough and almost cough. Where they smoke, there's fire. Where they smoke, there's fire, as a name. <laughs> there's enough fuel. And I'm still moving on full tank. I haven't... Baba, I haven't even got to three-quarter tank yet. They want to know what drug I'm on. Meds, Baba. No, 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 no. No contraband. Mr. K has got an eight-speed gear box, and he's got like an off-road gear. Bro, we are moving M5, M5 speed. We are redlining, Baba. We are redlining. Now watch this. Watch the next one. And this one came out. The next question even came out in this year's rewrite paper. Check the next one out. If f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared minus 8 has a local minimum at the point P, 2, and 10. Find A and B for six marks. Guys, I beg you, learn. These are templates. These are exam questions. This is your bread and butter questions. If you don't know how to do this, you will fail. Know your work. Now, it's very easy. That's what I'm here to do, to show you a template. So, when we're solving for A and B, A and B, it's two unknowns, so simultaneous equations. Now, how do you develop the simulator? Let me show you. You need a function equation. You need a function equation. And you need a derivative equation. And you do it exactly the way I'm doing it here. 
Pay attention. Put down your pen. I'll show you how nice. It's a work of art. It's a freaking Picasso. It's going to work out beautifully. Watch. Function, we plug this X and Y directly in. So 10 equals A into 2. We're using 10 and 2. X and Y. So Y is 10. A into 2 cubed plus B into 2 squared minus 8. So 10 equals A into 8 plus 2 squared. That's 4B minus 8. So 8A plus 4B is equal to 10 plus 8 is 18. That's equation number 1. Derivative f dash x. Whenever they tell you local minimum or maximum, your derivative must equal to zero. Just remember that. Whenever in mathematics, find maximum, find minimum. You take your derivative and you equate it to zero. So f dash x must equal to zero. So what's f dash x? Power rule. 3ax squared plus 2bx. The 8 will fall away is equal to zero. We got x. x is 2. 3a into 2 squared plus 2b into 2 equals 0. So that's 4 times 3, 12a plus 4b equals 0. That's equation number 2. So let's go here. 12a plus 4b equals 0. That's equation number 2. Let's solve simultaneously. I'm going to subtract the 2. So 12 minus 8 is 4a. Right, I'm doing equation number 2 minus equation number 1. 4b minus 4b is 0. 0 minus 18 is minus 18. So a equals minus 18 over 4. 2 goes into there 9 times. 2 goes into there. 2 goes into 4. 2 times. So a is minus 9 over 2. So find a and b. There's a. Now let's find b. 12a minus 9 over 2 plus 4b equals 0. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 12, 6 times. 6 times minus 9, minus 54, plus 4b equals 0. 4b equals 54. b equals 54 over 4. 2 goes into that 27 over 2. So b is equal to 27 over 2. And there we go. Boom, bada bing, bada boom, 6 marks. Six marks, we solve for A and B simultaneously. He's finished. Learn. Learn. Like I said, guys, to recap all of this, I know it's information overload right now. Once you go home and you start re-watching it, over and over and over, everything will make sense to you. You have to put in the effort. I can show you how it's done. To master it, practice. Practice makes perfect, but nobody's perfect, so why practice? To be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> no, I'm talking about maths. 2B, man. 2A, 2B, 2C. All right, how much time do we have left? Hey, we got 10 minutes. Five minutes. Let's do the last one in this. Let's do the last one. Higher order question in this. All right, here goes, last one. Onlineers, we're almost there. We're almost done for today. Danko. Caitlin. Lavron, tough times never last. Only tough people do. Ah, ah. getting words, pearls of wisdom here, bro. You heard that, guys. 
Tough times never last. Only tough people do. Can we quote the you battle, on that? The survival of the fittest. Well done, Lavron. Lavron is googling memes there, bro. <laughs> Art of war strategies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. The last one, last one, last one. Let's go, let's go. You took it down. Now watch this one. Watch this one. This is where we're wrapping up today. This is where we're wrapping up today. If f of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared minus 8 has a tangent given by g of x equals 2x minus 4 at x equal minus 1. Find A and B for 8 marks. These are templates. These are templates. I'm going to give you a beautiful template now how to do it. I want you to remember something that when two graphs touch, not only are their functions equal, but their gradients are also equal. So whenever two graphs touch, function equal function, gradient equal gradient. Make a note of that. Make a note of this. Very important to know. So we're solving for A and B. Function equal function, gradient equal gradient. In fact, that's equation number one, that's equation number two. And there we go, we're going to solve simultaneously. Right? Onliners, we're almost there. We're almost there. This is the last one, Comachelo. Thank you. Right, here goes, here goes, here goes. This is the last one for today. Function equal function. Gradient equal gradient. Right, put your pens down. Put your pens down. Put your pens down. Let's do it together. Function equal function. Ax cubed plus bx squared minus 8 equals 2x minus 4. Don't we have x minus 1? A into minus 1 cubed plus b into minus 1 squared minus 8 equals 2 into minus 1 minus 4. Minus a plus b minus a equals minus 2 minus 4. Minus a plus b equals minus 2 minus 4 minus 6. Minus 6 plus 8, 2. So therefore, a minus b equals minus 2. I just divided everything by minus 1. I now got equation number 1. Gradient equal gradient. So the gradient of that is the derivative f dash x must equal to the gradient of this y is equal to mx plus c the m so what's the gradient here 3 a x squared plus 2 b x the 8 will fall away is equal to not zero it's not minimum or maximum is equal to 2 the gradient so 3 a into minus 1 squared plus 2 b into minus 1 equals 2 uh, 3a minus 2b equals 2. That's equation number 2. So a equals b minus 2. Let's substitute that in there. So 3 into b minus 2 minus 2b equals 2. 3b minus 6 minus 2b equals 2. 3b minus 2b, 1b equals 2 plus 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. A equals 8 minus 2. A equals 6. Just like that. Just like that. QED quite easily done. 
para bem, para bom. Ok, boys and girls, that brings us to the end of today. That's it. Woohoo! Hey, what do you want to do? They want to do a Mexican wave. As the name, they say they want to do a Mexican wave. Let's take, I'm going to take it on camera so we can't show no, it. So no, I'm no, gonna... no, no, no. No, Mr. Coulter, oh. you've got a camera there. Can't yeah. you point the camera? Get our uh, able Which technician guy? to point the camera on the crowd, my, Mr. Coulter. Where's my, my technician? Bro, he's MIA. He is <laughs> MIA. Okay, you know what we'll do? We'll do the Mexican way first thing tomorrow morning. Guys, we start now. I say we start 8.30 tomorrow. How about that? Ah, uh, come on. Ah, uh, come on. Ah, uh, come on. You're going to sleep early. No baba last. All right, we'll start 9 o'clock tomorrow morning on the dot. Guys, be fresh and early. I hope you enjoyed today's session. And have a lovely evening. Have a lovely day. And I'll see you guys bright and fresh and early. I'll continue with calculus first thing in the morning and function. Then we'll start paper two. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all for joining us. As a name, thank you. You guys have been most amazing. And thank you for all our onlineers and all our on-siteers. Guys, I think you all need a nice round of applause. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Well done, well done, well done. And salute. We see everybody tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kota. I'm going to do the vote of thanks there. I would like to thank the almighty God for giving us this opportunity to be together uh, in person and virtually. I would love to thank um, Shanaz Ibrahim. She's been amazing. Uh, would you agree, Mr. K, for opening yes, up the absolutely. session this morning? Yes, there we go. We'd like to thank Mr. Mohammed Riza. He's been very instrumental from the Al Ghazali School, the college, in terms of putting this program together. You and your staff have been awesome. And lots of this hard work uh, you have invested uh, in this program. Would love to thank our technical team there behind the scenes, Mr. Ibrahim and his team. They've been absolutely amazing putting everything together uh, to assist us. Can you do uh, uh, join us tomorrow from 9 uh, a.m. to 3 p.m.? Mr. Kota is going to be taking us through to Matt's paper too. It's very important that we do this revision to prepare you for your June examination and all further information we'll share with you uh, during the course of tomorrow with regards to the competition and the like. And you can you can watch this video. It'll be housed on OCAV's uh, YouTube uh, channel. So um, please uh, look out for that. Let me put that on the screen. So and Mr. Kota, like you need anybody. to subscribe to the OCAV SA uh, YouTube page. It's OCAV South Africa. So you can see Mr. K in his glory there on jet fuel as he's going to take you up to the next planets and so on. I uh, would like to thank our online audience. You've been amazing. You've been astute. You've been you've given it lots of energy. Um, so Mr. K will just shout out some of your names over there. Just Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Bright. Right, thank you, Bright. Thank you, Mosima Sedibana. Thank you, Ewolf Gang. Thank you, Hangum Sanyo. Thank you, Lavron Rabia Kassem, Fasia Mullah, Mosima Sedibana, Vision Danko, Neo MK, Lavron, and everybody. Rabia Kassem, yes, 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 Selina. Enjoy the workshop. Makadesh, Kombasi, you are on fire. As the Private Academy, guys, emotional support for Siyanda, Danko Tobile, Slick Lizard, Buya. Watch the pass rate increase. There'll be no space, guys. No space adverts. And yeah, thank you guys all for engaging. Siabonga, Ngiabonga, Babakota, Ngiabonga, Jokulo. Right. Danko. Have thank you for the photos, Mr. K. That's some of the photos of your awesome people. That's, all, that's our crowd coming in from this side. Well done, Katlejo, Manana, Selina, Seshune, Danko, and everybody else that's all coming in there. Hola, KG99, all coming in. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys loved it. Rangels, Rand, hey, Rangels. 
Hola. Big shout out to Okay, Randall. Mr. Big Tota, to we're going to be signing off. Thank you for your energy, your dedication and making this uh, program happen. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow and we'll launch off again. All the best to all of our learners. All Thank you so much. You tomorrow morning. In Koska Ko, Shukran, Assalamu Alaikum, wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, and communities celebrate. OCAF South Africa, a charitable wakaf organization, makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments while the fruits support a wide variety of charitable causes. Visit okafsa.org.za to discover how your wakaf can bless our community with a legacy of care. Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving and prosperous society. However, the South African educational system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Educational Waka Fund to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 40,000 matriculants. At the schools participating in our program, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, it was a life-changing experience. So I've never reached that kind of height before. It was quite a milestone and I believe that our co has been quite instrumental in me reaching that milestone. Um, and I also like the spirit Mr. Kota made sure that we're always engaged with the content. So for me, that's what made it a very um, positive. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as read, educating our community is an act of faith. With your help, we can transform many more lives.